What is up, everybody? All right, time for some more tomfoolery. Our last few days before the horror that is the maze event. And I will say, I will say, I'm looking forward to all the free loot that that event gives. I'm not really looking forward to anything else about it. So after the stream today, I'm going to start working on that St. George video we talked about yesterday. I'm looking forward to that. That'll take a minute, but uh, worth it. All right, let's see what's going on here. But yeah, it, we got the CCC thing, then it's the maze event, and then finally the fifth year anniversary. And hopefully we get some good stuff. I'm really looking forward to the fifth year anniversary. It's just, it's a shame that I have to get through that fucking maze again. I just, okay, so this time it's going to be the patched version from the beginning, so it won't be as painful. I've got a, a newer phone, so it'll run better. So I, 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 and it's a rerun, so you know, ho hopefully it, it, uh, it's not too- Oh yeah, and the engine update. So yeah, hopefully all these things combined will make it a less uh, horrible experience. It's still boring, but uh, hopefully less loading in that boring. Alright, let's see if we can get Passion Lip Unlocked today. Which I don't think we're gonna keep. I mean, she has not aged well with command codes and everything. So I think there's better fights later, and on honestly, just, the more wanted quests I can unlock, the better. But uh, yeah, I'm leaning towards me to keeping Melt or or Nameless or something. I would keep Tiara, but it's like impossible because if you keep Tiara, you you have to lose all the wanted quests. But then if you don't beat her, you don't unlock like the second half of the wanted quests. That kind of sucks. There's really no world where I can keep Tiara practically because, like I said, you keep her, you lose all the opening wanted quests. And then if you don't let the, the fight finish, you don't unlock all the later ones. So, it's kind of lame. I think that's how it works, we'll see. There are so many ways to just wreck Melt. Not Melt, what am I saying? Passion Lip. Like, there's craft essences that make the heal super strong. There's just the command code now. You can just use the command code for the heal boost. And, and even without that stuff, it's not that hard to, to smack her. Hey, thank you for the resub. I have no idea how to say this name as usual. I'm gonna say Marcel. I'm just gonna go with that, but thank you for the three month resub. Okay, all the night classes and then a writer. Hmm. I wonder if this is Suzuka goes in again and we just trash mobs before. Could be. Will remember to buff Matahari this time? They might. They might. You know, they, they've been really digging that whole thematic buffing thing. So it could happen. But yeah, with the way they've been doing things, it'll be a comma buff. That's true. We'll see. Okay, why not? I, I know this is like OP as fuck and it's gonna make it really easy, but I mean, every once in a while. You can counter a class. There's, 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 there's Lancers here. That's the thing. Big boy. So I played that Tales game more last night. And I actually watched the story and stuff. And honestly, the presentation on the story is not bad. I mean, the story is not the most interesting right now. But the presentation is good. Uh, and I'll say this, Fco needs to copy them. They're, 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 uh, they're not going to because Fco's lazy, but that the, what they're doing with how they get the voice acting to the game is very smart and it's very smooth and it really takes advantage of just, you know, our technology has advanced. So, if you tried to put full voice acting in a, in a very story-driven game, like Fco or this Tales game, you know, you try to put that on, on your phone, the file size is going to be so large, I mean, you're, you're going to kill grandma with, with how large that file size is, right? You, nobody wants that. But what they do is for, you know, all the basic voice work, all the main stuff, you know, you just download that and that's in the game like normal, but that, that's not like that much voice acting. And for all the story bits, when you, when you load up the chapter, you just download the voice bits for that chapter, which takes like five seconds, because, you know, it's just one chapter at a time. And then when you're done with that chapter, it deletes the, 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 that file. And if you want to go back, it'll just download it again. Which, I mean, it's not an inconvenience. It takes so little time, like that's nothing. Uh, and I think you can even turn it off so it doesn't have to do that. It just does the text, like if you have data problems or something. 
That's a really good system, though. It allows them to... Uh, one of the biggest things that stops games from putting in the production value to, to like, fully voice the story, like you might see in a PC game or something, is the file size. That's a huge part of why. And they've kind of just gotten around that, and that's a pretty smart way of doing it. I'm sure some people would hate it, but overall, I think it's actually really good. But Epco won't do that because they don't want to pay the voice actors that much, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, pretty much everybody. I mean, I, I don't know why... Some people are really surprised by Mozart being voiced by Gilgamesh's voice actor. I literally knew it the moment I heard Mozart speak. The first thing he ever said, I was instantly like, oh, hey, that's Gilgamesh's voice actor. It's incredibly obvious to me. But there is... And that's how I think most people are, but there definitely is a group of people that uh, are like, what the fuck? Oh, hi, Hector. But yeah, to me, that's that is not one of the... Like, I, th I think the voice actor does a good job, don't get me wrong. Like, he's doing a good job of get putting, like, a different inflection in his voice, so he has a very different vibe. But it's still obviously him. So I probably should have done the art chain. Nah, nah, don't worry. Um, hmm. It's kind of awkward. Can't get a lot done this turn. Yeah, Canis is definitely one of the more extreme instances, I would say. But yeah, the production value in that Tales game is very good, the way they handle like the story. Lots of like visual novel picture bullshit going on and then the voice acting and everything. Still though, the core gameplay is pretty boring, but uh, what are you gonna do? Alright. We just- I think we just go for Hector right now, we try to get- get rid of him. I don't think we go for a second NP yet. I should've made stars. I, I should've made stars. Because if we crit, we would've killed him. Why- why did I not make stars? That would've been so much- that was absolutely would've been worth it to use one of my- Fucking rip in P game, by the way. But yeah, I should have used one of my the, my my third skill there. Bezel and Shakespeare is another pretty obvious one to me. Yeah, the story's all right. Like it's not super deep, but so far it's been fun to see the characters and stuff. And like they said, they did. They put a lot of effort into the production value of it and everything, so... Yeah, just watching the story, and so I was like, oh, this is fun, but it's not... It doesn't make me, like, really enjoy the gameplay, right? So it's not... It doesn't add a lot of longevity to it for now, but hopefully... I, and I feel like a lot of things you need to do to make the gameplay better, I don't think they're going to do. Like, the characters need more than three skills, because, like, it's so fucking simplistic. Like, any thought you're going to put into that game is going to be into the team setup, not into actually executing it. Because not only do you only have three skills to pick from and literally nothing else, and there's no mystic code, no normal cards, nothing to mix in with it, but because like the skills have, you know, decent cooldowns, it's really obvious what you're supposed to do, right? You just, you use the, the main thing and then you just use whatever's up and then until they're off cooldown. Like, that's so boring! Like, it's crazy how straightforward the gameplay is. So, yeah, I'm not a, not a fan of that. So, it was a very bad start to this stage. You can definitely tell with Edmund and Arjuna, but that's definitely a harder to tell, like... Even though, when you, when you really think about it, it's like, oh yeah, that's... That is definitely the same voice actor. It's easy to not, like, actually think about it, because, like, the... The vibe is really different. I mean, I did say the name of the game. It's not like there's a bunch of new Tales of Foam games right now. Probably kill her right now. I just really wish I had used my crit stars earlier because they'd be back soon. I was really messed up. I'm gonna have to do this. Because if she doesn't die, it's gonna be really annoying. How did I get worse? Hmm. RNG boys! I'm gonna have to restart. We messed up so bad on Hector. Oh my 
god. Okay, I'm just gonna start over. That, I, I, I like how we, 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 we got none of that crit there. That, that was great. Nice damage, Orion. If he doesn't crit, it's pretty depressing. We respect Caesar in this household. Caesar's awesome. I mean, I wouldn't say so lows, I would say so low. Always nice to get a defense down when you're fighting your counterclass. That's really swell. I could kill this guy in turn one, the trash mob here. But if we don't, it's not that big of a deal. I could have though, we actually we have a lot of overcharge there, so I could have killed that guy and got lane B. Well we learned. Although on the flip side I get to get a lot of overkill here. I know, Europa's had more raid ups, and she's barely been in the game. You know, meanwhile, there's all kinds of characters that have had like one raid up. And then you've got Beowulf who has half a raid up. I still think she's one of the most poorly handled five stars they've ever done. They, there was so much wrong with the way they handled that. And it was bad for them. I think it really hurt the sales of that character big time. I mean, there's a lot of permanent characters that don't get raid ups. There, there's a lot of permanent characters that don't get raid ups. Like, go look at the list of all the permanent five stars, and then you realize how many of these like never get rated up. Okay, let's see. We, we want Hector to die, but we want to do it with the minimum amount of, of skills, but we're going to have to use something. <sighs> Thinking we don't use... I mean, we kind of need to use our second skill, but it's such a bad time to cast Guts. But it'll probably... I think it'll come back. I don't think we'll need this for Antalanta. Okay, this, sh this should work. So I'm doing the crit order like this, not because of the crit chances, but because of the command codes. So it's kind of backwards, but it is what it is. Okay, we're good. I like, I like how the most powerful one didn't crit, but thankfully we only needed two crits. Now we want stars. He'll be back. I mean, we definitely cared because we were being counterclassed. It made us have to kill him a lot faster than normal. And we had to waste resources. If he had not been a Lancer, that would have been a lot smoother. Do we just- do we try to bonker or do we go for the loop? Because we got the Merlin command code. I think we try to bonker. Because, I mean, we still got the thing, so... Looping was tempting, it's just there's no reason to loop for the dogs. Like, because the thing! What, what am I gonna do? I'm, I'm gonna hit the dog for 900k instead of, instead of like 500k? Like, there's- I, I don't- it's pointless, you know, it's, I can't- I can't hit the dog so hard that it kills the other dog, right? I- you fucking didn't crit again. I mean, she lives. Oh my god. That's not good. At least the dogs are being stupid. Yeah, I'm sure those defense ups will save you guys. Okay, I mean, surely. Don't call me Shirley, but surely 
this this will work. We have decent crit chances here. There we go. Crit, crit, give me that overkill. Yeah, I got overkill, art card, and Merlin command code all in one place. Can I kill both of these by target switching? If I had if we crit, yes. Oh my god. Yeah, there you go. Cast the crash with music, yep. You know, I probably should have gone for Star Gen. Like, although that got us really close to getting another- I mean, I don't know, that gets us close enough that we'll get another MP without having to use art cards and stuff, so that's actually kinda good. Okay, thank God our Guts comes back next turn, otherwise we would be in so much trouble. Okay, it's time to hit buttons. Thankfully, we just need all the burst damage now, because even if we completely fall off, it doesn't matter, because the ones that are left only have 25k health. As long as Liz dies this turn, we're good. And, uh, you know, chat, I don't know what it is. I don't know what's giving me this feeling, but I, I have a feeling Liz is about to go bye-bye. E everybody say bye, Liz, because I, I, don't, I don't think she's sticking around. I like how she's also a saber. So we've already killed her multiple times. She just, she just, she just died so many times. Like, we just killed all the alternate versions of Liz right there. I'm so glad that our guts came back. That would be so stupid if we got this far and then we died to one of the dogs. But not critting. We dropped all the way down to 16k, man. That hurts. Yep, we needed the guts. That was actually really close. <laughs> Although we're doing all this awesome damage, that was actually close. Watch him triple, not crit. I mean, I think we would still kill it, but uh, I would definitely still kill it, but that would be really upsetting. Oh, we leveled. Okay, that's uh, that's really random because it, it's so rare how you level at this uh, at this point in the game. You know what sucks is that there's I can't use that AP. I'm just gonna chip away at it with five at a time instead of doing like a bunch of forties, right? Like really take advantage of it. Not, there's nothing to farm. There's like no event. Like so, that, that's uh, that's an, this is probably the least practical time to level ever. That's when the maze event is coming up. So that's kind of sad. But oh well. Uh, is this Passion Lip? I, I guess we'll do it with Koo first, just because I haven't done it in ages and I kind of want to. Uh, we'll stick around in Passion Lip for a while, but she's probably not going to be the boss fight that we keep, because I don't think she's just really hard anymore, so... Times change and all that. Alrighty, man, that background is just awful. That's another reason I wouldn't want to keep this stage. Well, we got a pretty atrocious opening hand. But all things considered, that's probably a good thing. I guess instant death was like the only thing you have to worry about here. It's not that it also like crash. Hmm. Imagine if you used Maiden Halloween, the CE that boosts all healing by 75%, and then you had the command code that boosts healing. 
Like, you basically full heal every turn. At that point, that's just overkill, but, uh... Oh, I still have the, the heal command code on. I don't really need that anymore, but, uh, I'll keep it on for now. Yeah, normally, Ku's got the survivability on lock. So you don't you don't need more survivability on his command codes. You want damage, but uh, I'm sure we'll be fine regardless. Hmm. Might be too soon to cast this, but uh, nice to have a safety net. So this is a fight that can go on long enough, especially if you're in a more stall unit that you could use Atlas at the beginning. And then get it back at the end. Like, I could probably use invulnerability right now and then get it back later. But, uh, I don't think there's any real need for that. Yeah, I, don't, I get a little bit of motion sickness from the background, too, if I, like... Depending on, like, how I observe it, I guess. Like, I kind of ignore it, it's not that bad. But yeah, I, I really don't like the background here. Oh yeah, her hit count is massive. I shouldn't cast Guts yet though. It's too soon, definitely. Look at her double defense buffing. She didn't want to attack anymore because she would have given me my uh, my NP. She's chickening out. That was actually a good move. If I, if I was playing as Passion Lip, I would have done the same thing. I would have been really pissed off though that I just got crit and, and still had my bar break. Oh yeah, I cast Guts way too soon. Okay, now she's got the defense up. Be a bit tanky now. Yeah, I just try not to pay attention to the background. I don't know, if you kind of see in the corner of your eye, that almost makes it worse. I don't know, I was going to play around with this stage for a while, because it's kind of a fun stage to see who can do it, especially on the lower rarity end of things. But I don't know, I, I might be giving my, my, my chat motion sickness, and I might give myself motion sickness, so I don't, I don't know if it's worth it. Yeah, I totally wasted Guts, man. I should have cast Guts now. Like, that turn, I should have cast Guts. Yeah, this is probably my least favorite background in the entire game. There's other backgrounds that are similar to it, but because of the coloring and stuff, though, it's just, it's really bad. When I was young, I got motion sickness really, really, really badly. I've gotten uh, over it mostly. Like in the first health bar, she has defense down, and so you just wreck her, and then the second one she has defense up, and then no more defense down, so it's a bit, uh, slower. Then she casts her own defense up. Oh, joy. You know what I'm saying? I just, I cast Guts way too soon, right? Like, so pointless that I cast that soon. You might say, oh, but you can recast it now, and it's fine. But I could have had it up, like, I just had put it up, and then done the cooldown reduction, and then had the next one off cooldown, right? Which, that's way better. Shut up. 
When you crit and it just doesn't matter. Honestly, I didn't even need to do that. I mean, she's gonna give me my NP from attacking me. So I think if you play Ku really well here, uh, which I'm not really doing right now, I'm not playing terribly, but I'm not playing amazing. Uh, damn it. But uh, if you play Ku like really well here, I think you could probably take out like six health bars with this boss or some shit. Like you could just keep going, especially if you really take advantage of a rank 10 Atlas and you cast this stuff like early and then get it back again. Like it, it could get pretty wild. You know, I might as well go for 200%. It's not likely, but it could happen. Get that bigger defense down, like why not? Atlas is such an annoying Mystico to get to 10 because it it is a very bad... It is a very bad Mystico for farming. It does basically nothing in farming. So it, it doesn't contribute to anything. Fire, like doing things that could be Mystic Code ranks. And then it also gains nothing from leveling until 10, right? So it's like, and it takes an abnormally long time. So it's, oh, we got 200% nice. But so it's, it's just awful. No, max HP down is not a good idea for the player characters. They should never do that. There are so there are so many boss mechanics and stuff that would get fucked up because of that, and that would really limit their ability to make new boss fights and gimmicks and stuff. That uh, it's, that's not a good idea. If I was gonna do anything to his MP, I would have him remove buffs before damage. And I think I think it is totally fair for a lot of MPs to remove buffs after damage. It's like it's, a, it's not something everyone should have. It's a boon. It's a bonus, right? It's like, you can have a unit, oh wow, they're really good, you know, and like, like Masashi. Masashi's got good survivability, debuff removal, good damage, good MP gain. There's so many good things about Masashi. And as a bonus, she also removes buffs, right? But it's after the damage, so it's not like the, it's not like the most amazing thing ever. It's not like her, oh my god, look how good this is. But she's already good in so many other fields. You know, it's fine to have like, oh yeah, and as a bonus, she can remove buffs, so that can be kind of handy. Right, it, it makes it more aimed at removing crit buffs and and like defense buffs for your teammates, things like that. It's not so much like oh, I can NP and get through you know invulnerability or something. Right, that's that's fine. Right, uh, and, and like with Abigail, because the rest of Abigail's kit is kind of eh, you know it's kind of fair that her shtick is oh hey she gets to remove buffs then do damage because she kind of needs you know an extra thing you know going her way. Where with Deer Mid, especially with health, because they buffed Koo for some reason. Right, Deer Mid needs more in his camp, right, to make him special. And, you know, it's like, yeah, it's nice that he's got solid survivability, decent MP damage and all that, and then as a bonus, he removes buffs after, which that's good. Again, removes crit buffs and attack buffs, and all that can be very useful to your team. And sometimes you, it's worth it to use it to remove something like invulnerability or evade for your teammate, but it's not as, you know, optimal as it could be. That's good, but it, it could be better, and it, he deserves to be better, so that'd be something they could have done. I feel like that now, though, they already buffed the MP, so... Yeah, Musashi has so uh, ignoring invinci invincibility anyway. But there's other buffs that you might want to remove, you know, like a bunch of defense ups or or whatever. You know, there's various things you might want to remove before your MP damage. So it's, it would still be Musashi would absolutely be better if she still did it before damage. It, although it does, it absolutely does affect her less than a lot of other units, uh, for sure. This is such a lame turn. I guess I. Do that. Like the way uh, the crit spread was, and the way my command codes are, that uh, didn't really work out the way I wanted it to.
I like how there's like no way for us to lose, because we still have guts, and we're gonna be at max health. And then, if, and then our evasion comes back. Like... And then by the next next NP, our guts would be back again. And then for the next next NP, I think uh, Atlas would be back. Actually, no, then Protection Arrows would be back. Uh, for the, and then after that, then we could use Atlas again, so then we could use Protection Arrows again. That's ridiculous! We could keep going for so long, and I actually played bad. Like, I, I, I didn't play properly. Also, the 1k heal command code was so pointless here because we're overhealing so much. Yeah, honestly, if you played really well here, you had the right CE and the right command codes. Maybe use a tanky CE. I think you could live forever in this fight if you played really well. Alright, I'm ready to cancel the app because there's a pretty good chance she's going to die here. He doesn't have any defense ups or damage cuts. Look at the look at the difference, by the way, compared to when we were fighting George. Because remember, George was you know our alignment was backwards, where where George had the alignment bonus against us, so our MP was doing like you know 65k and stuff, and against Passion, like we just do 81. Like okay. And I, 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 I think the most damage I've seen Ku do, if there's no buffs involved, completely vanilla NP damage. I think my Ku, the best he's done is like 86k. I think I hit Achilles for that. Yeah, everything starts to add up. Oh yeah, the Ku's turn. Buster. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I try to use that in my videos as often as I can, just because it's something random a lot of people haven't seen. I'm surprised they haven't patched Ku to be able to do it at random, although I guess the way his animations work, we can't really do that. I, I actually really do hope Ku eventually, not not soon, so many other things need, need animation updates before him, like, I don't know, Proto-Ku? Um, but at some point, way down the line, I hope they update Ku again, because his update's not that good, to be honest. Like, his model looks fine, but it... <laughs> If you look, if you read like how Ku fights and stuff in the visual novel and everything, it's like they didn't really represent it very well at all, and there's a lot of wasted potential. I, I, I find his animation update quite boring. Um, like the sprite work is fine, but the actual attacks are pretty lame. So I, I, I hope someday they update them and make them better. QBB should giggles for the ultimate BM lol. Alright chat, who are we gonna try? Because the really strong solo units have a really easy time here because of the heal. Um, trying to think what somebody that might actually have a hard time here. Mordred would probably get wrecked because Mordred has like no hard survival and the passion does enough in easier way. I think that would probably get Mordred. I kind of want to try, just because this stage is Okita. Do we have an Okita? We do. That's NP1. That's kind of rough. I always, always hate using NP1 on a servant like Okita because she's so designed around like NP and critting than NPing again that it, it, it feels kind of bad. I swear we have another Okita. The twins would be way too easy. Like that's. That's so easy. Like that, that, that's, that's just, that's bullying. Arthur has no chance. Mordred has a way better chance than Arthur. Ar Arthur is just not a good solo unit. Uh, the one time Arthur can solo is if the enemy is large, because then you could do like a crit turn to break a health bar, then do the anti-large damage uh, to break a health bar, you know, then, because at that point his DPS output is really high. But, um, his complete lack of survivability is kind of an issue. Void? Void could probably do it, actually. Might, uh, might take a minute, but... Uh, I want to I try Mordred just because this is so not a good fight for her, because she's AoE, this is single target. You, you want at least some hard survival because the one threat is the NP, and Mordred has really no good way of dealing with that, but she does have the defense up. 
So I'm kind of curious. I think Mordred probably could do this if you gave her better command codes. I think she's going to need a little bit more survivability or, or damage. I think that's going to get us, ultimately. I might go with Atlas. I also might go with the Gut CE to try to help her. Like, uh, with the, help her with the survivability side of things. I need to get this CE to 100. I really do. I use it enough that it would be worth it. Let me think. Atlas would mean I could get my third skill more, and that would the third skill is like the one way we're going to survive an NP. Without Atlas, we could do like third skill, and then like Mystic Code Evade, and then probably third skill again, and then that's about it. There's no debuffs. The Atlas's debuff removal is not really any good. It would all, but however, Atlas would also mean we could get our second skill more, and her second skill is really, really good. Hmm. I don't know, I, th I think we might need default. Or you try to just win really fast with Anniversary Blonde, just, just pump out the damage and try to get through those health bars really quick. Like, that might work. Like, some, sometimes the answer is just, you know, see red, press red. That, that really can be. We'll try Atlas, see what happens. But, uh, this might be a bit tough. Because, again, no survivability, hard survivability in the uh, Ray AoE. But we have really good stats, so. Perk would, uh, have a very easy time here. That would have been funny if they'd given Passion Lip. The large trait, but uh, they didn't. That music timing, though. Who could do this with no CE, by the way? Alright, let's see if we can face tank this. It's a good time to use our third skill anyway. If we use our second skill next turn, we try to. Well. We're not gonna do counter class damage, we just put Prince down. The, the worry is if I do a Buster Chain and we almost break it, but we don't, that would be so bad. And in that case, I should use my second skill, but I feel like the second skill might be overkill. Hey, thank you for the... Oh, gifted sub! Thank you for the gifted sub. L3 Luna or something. I can't say your fucking name. I never can. But, you know... Thank you for the gifted sub, man. I think it's the second time you've uh, done that. Thanks, man. Yeah, blue note, but I mean, it's just spelled stupid. Okay, we're face tank that one. It gets worse, though. We're face tank that pretty good, though. Oh god, we should have used our second. That's so bad! God damn it, I should have used my second skill. I'm gonna restart because of that. That's so bad. Oh my god. Besides, if I had done that, I could have used my cooldown reduction sooner, which would mean I could potentially like live long enough to do it again. I actually think Mordred could do this with just the command code that gave you heal boost. I think that alone would probably be enough. I lost the account that had it normal. Ouch, that sucks. This 
It's like the exact same hand as before. which kind of sucks, because that was nice. And that makes it less good to use my second skill now, because I didn't make any fucking stars. Made literally zero. Well, that, uh, that's pretty lame. If I just had like two or three stars, you generally will have enough star absorbed to make sure your busters crit. But because I... I I'm kind of pissed I didn't at least make like two stars there. That's pretty lame. Um, well, RNG, take the wheel. Oh, that's not looking good. Oh, no. Yep. Yep. I like how, even though, yeah, making zero stars was really bad, we still had a pretty good chance to crit there, right? It was actually in our favor. But of course not. I just like how I got a hand where there was no way I could make, like, I could have made a couple of stars, but not enough to like warrant doing like, basically no damage that turn. I basically had to either do zero damage and make like three stars or do a little bit of damage but make zero stars. That was really lame. And not only that, but we also got bad luck because with her star absorb skill for Buster cards only, like we, sh we actually should have gotten a higher crit chance than we even have. The fucking art card still took 30%. I think the quick took like 10 or 20 or something. I thought <laughs> every thing in the slot is the heal. You make me mood. <laughs> Thank you for the two uh, two month resub, man. I, I swear, you all have the most ridiculous names that you know I can't say. I don't. I. I don't, like. What the fuck, man? Like what the what the fuck? But thank you. I appreciate the sub. All right, I'm gonna make stars here. The king, your name is normal. Your name is normal. I swear I'm encouraging this stuff. It's not even being a boomer, I just have never been good at with names, like at all. That's mainly because, you know, the whole uh, upbringing thing and all that, but let's not get into that now. Alright, um, at least we made stars last turn, so our odds of critting now are significantly higher. Yeah, so, uh, there we go. That, that's, that's what I'm talking about. And also a boomer. I mean, there is that. Hey, Ted. I love Arjuna. Thank you for the... 50 second gifted sub. The worst donut. What is the worst donut though? This background is giving me a headache. We're gonna have to move on soon. I, I don't want to give myself a migraine because I'm, I'm playing the passion up stage a lot. It's just not worth it. Sour donut. Sour cream and onion donut? Is that a thing?
All right, what are we doing here? Maybe we get a lucky crit here. The worst donut is no donut. I can kind of agree with that. Thank you, everybody. Guys, I don't even... Like, it's crazy. I... I really am at, like, at a loss of what I'm, I'm supposed to say, because, like, these last... This last month has just been ridiculous, like, the amount of... I, I just want to be clear, guys. Like, I, I really do. I, I, I really appreciate the subs and everything, but I do not want that to encourage, like, other people to feel like they need a sub right now. Like, I'm fine. I'm good, right? I, I'm, I'm gonna, you know... So, you know, save your money if you, you need it, right? You just... Because I'm not, seriously, I'm not like living paycheck to paycheck here. Like, I'm not. Like, so, Jesus Christ, you know, fucking, everyone's out of work and all this shit. So it's like, just, uh, you know, be careful. That's what I'm saying. There's nothing, I'm not saying don't donate to your favorite streamers. You know, if you're like, oh my God, I uh, gotta go sub to Cairo, you know, by all means. But, you know, don't, if you can't afford it, don't, right? Like, don't. Like, I, I don't even mean my stream. Fuck my stream. I mean, all the other streams, right? Like, like, don't. I, I think sometimes people just get like in that mindset where like they really enjoy someone's content like they really do and That's good. Like I, I love I love this guy's content blah 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 Everyone else is serving so I want to stuff but like you know Be be responsible with your money. That's kind of what I'm trying to say. Just be responsible with your money, right? You know make make sure you You, you got a handle on it first because I remember when I was like a teenager and stuff You know my, my father really helped me kind of understand finances from an early age and everything and that really helped me save up a lot And that really set me up for life really well Right? And, and some people don't have that, so, you know, saving is good. I'm just saying. That's enough Boomer Green for now, though. Alright. Um... We don't have all the Buster stuff. I'm actually gonna do Art Art, I think. It's so rare that you do this. It is so rare that you do this, but... Like, see, here's the thing. My, my eldest brother was an idiot, okay? And he was horrible with his money, right? And that, that is really... And when you're in your younger years, you have like a special period in your life where you're actually capable of saving up, but you don't have many expenses, right? And that's a really good time to save up money to, to, to kind of maybe help you buy a car or, or, or a down payment on a house or, or something like that, right? And those can... That can really help you in the long run, right? And so you don't want to waste that opportunity. And I saw my, my eldest brother waste that opportunity and that made a lot of problems for him, where I did the opposite, and it, it helped me a lot in life. Like, it really did. Yeah, I remember my dad was like, look, you, you have this period in your life where you can accumulate money, and actually a lot, you know, because like at the time I, I worked uh, at a pizza place, and I got I, I got really good hours there and stuff, and then I also did like some grass cutting and stuff on the side. And I had no bills, man. I had no bills. So that's every paycheck just in the bank, full thing, 100%, well, you know, taxes, you know, I don't gotta deal with that. But, you know, that's, you, you don't have that length of life, right? Right, you have a lot of expenses as you get older. And so, you know, my father was like, you know, take advantage of this and save. I know it's boring, you, you wanna buy all the fancy shit and stuff, but it's like, you know, and yeah, you can buy some stuff, you gotta enjoy your freedom, that's fine. But make sure you put some aside, and uh, that really added up over the years, man. So then by the time I was an adult, and I, I had my own uh, bills to pay and everything, I was in really good shape, and that, that helped me a lot. And so it's just, it's not, you know, when you're, when you're younger and stuff, it's always good to, you know, think of your finances. Even if you're like, oh, I'm young, it doesn't matter yet. It, 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 you, you gotta be responsible, man. Okay, um, mmm. So yeah, I think she could. I'm telling you, I think she accept my love, Mr. Green. Okay, that's that that, that that's uh, that's the thing. Thank you for the three month three sub though, King. You're kind of making me look bad now, but uh, thank you. Okay, I'm trying to think. I, I I'm quite sure though she could do this if she had just a little bit of help from command codes on the healing front. Like I think she's gonna be a bit short right now. But yeah, I think I think she could do it. I wish I could have NP'd this turn. That would have been a lot better. This is really awkward now with my third skill, the way it's coming back. Hmm.
I mean, I'm gonna count on her hit count giving me my MP, and if it doesn't, I, I'm gonna have to probably use my third skill anyway. I should have used invulnerability so much sooner in this fight. Oh, passion lip, you fool. That was like the worst thing she could have done. You just done the stupidest thing in your life. That was. I mean, I guess she was trying to deny my NP gain. And I'll give her that. She she did do that, but we have our third skill. Uh, I think we actually face tank this NP. I was wanting to do invulnerability to kind of get more health back because you won't take damage again. But I think we can face tank this. I think it's all right. Nikita would be ridiculous here, but uh, that would be some overkill. <laughs> trying to teach kids math? Oh boy, that's rough. I think I'd lose my mind if I tried to do that. I I, I I have a, a roommate, but that's not out of necessity, that's just because we're friends, and uh, I lived on my own for a very long time. I uh, I actually moved out when I was 15 because, uh, you know, that wonderful uh, parental situation I was in at the time. Um, ooh, that was a lot more damage than I would have liked. But yeah, I moved out when I was 15, then I moved back in for a little bit when my father died. Um, and then I got my own place again when I was like... 17, 18, and then ever since then I've been on my own, and then like two years ago I let Tusk move in with me because, uh, you know, it helps him out a lot because he, he didn't have the best life circumstances either. And I know I benefit from it, it's definitely, you know, I, 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 get, I get to save even more money. Um, but yeah, so for a really, really fucking long time I lived on my own. Alright, so Guts could go off this turn. Is there any reason I'd want to prevent that? I mean, yeah, but uh, there's also a chance it doesn't go off this turn, which would be amazing. I need to use- and because I've waited so long to use invulnerability, I have to use it for the next NP, basically. Dude, if I just had the heal command code, or the heal boost command code, I think she could do this. And she might be able to do this, but I don't think so. I don't think she's- she's not quite, like, stabilizing. Me and Tusk actually don't see each other very much just because uh, when when I wake up and when he works and everything, like it's all pretty w whack. Damn it! I really wanted to either get my NP there or not have guts go off. That kind of that kind of that kind of ended us there. I needed like one more turn. Yeah, I I, I think the, the the her third skill is her third skill is good enough that if she's healing a little bit more per turn. Uh, I think she could last uh, long enough to win, but uh, without that, I don't think she's uh, quite got it. She definitely can do it, but not with this setup. But ultimately, this boss can almost be soloed by anyone if you give them the right stuff. If you give them the right CE, if you give them the right command codes, just because of the way that, that large heal you're getting works, um, and most of the roster can actually do it if you set them up properly. Yeah, I do that every single time I, I Billy NPs, I do that every single time 100 face NPs, I do that every single time Gwen NPs. Um, Gwen is pretty easy though. Like, yeah, it takes you know, it takes a few minutes, you know, every, you know to, to do it. But it's pretty, it's a pretty straightforward way to how you fix your sound effects and voice line and all that. Wow, we would have lived that turn, but you crit. Yeah, Mordred could get uh, pretty far there, even even without the command code and stuff. Uh, I think she could do pretty well there. Protoku could probably do this. Uh, again, he might need a command code to help him out, but yeah, I think he could do this. Kind of, really, anyone that has a survivability skill and then you get, you know help them take advantage of the heal, uh, they're, they're gonna win. I guess it's just ultimately not that hard of a fight. Yeah, we'll try Okita. I need to move on because I don't want to give myself a headache. Um, so I don't want to be stuck here too long. But yeah, we, people wanted Okita, so I just wish we had a better Okita than this because MP1 Okita is suffering, dude. Like the way her gameplay is. 
It's not that, that she's bad, like, you still, she still gets a lot of value at MP1, it's just... She MPs so often that just being MP2 by the end of the run uh, ends up being so much more damage. I have no idea what command code we want for her. I'll try default. I don't know, uh, Atlas might be right though, just for the... Increased ability to deal with MPs coming your way. Oh yeah, Leo would wreck, wreck this fight. Like, she has such a high hit count. Like, <laughs> she has such a high hit count, and, and then she, he gets healed every turn. Like, that's just gonna be so easy. What I do, if my favorite character by a mile is a 5 star, is I just keep saving up for them, right? I, and if I get, you know, I just keep saving. I just keep saving and saving, and every time they're rated up, I roll on them. That's the, uh, the way. What I feel bad for is the people where, like, their top three servants are all 5 stars, and they're, like, all of them almost the same. At that point, you just pick one at a time. I, I, I just go for one at a time and get them MP2 one at a time. That's what I would do. But for me, it's been pretty easy because most of my favorites are 3 stars, and there are a few 5 stars that I really like. But they've been spread out a lot uh, when they were added, and I have multiple accounts, so I can get a focus on one on one account and, and one on another. And uh, there's just there's not that many five stars that I'm crazy about, so it's it's been pretty smooth for me. Yeah, they'll probably do Lost Belt banners with the anniversary, I think. I think this anniversary is going to be a big one, though. I think they're going to do some crazy shit, so... I'm really looking forward to it. I hope I'm not disappointed, and I probably will be, but... I mean, seriously, they were going to rent out the Tokyo Dome if it wasn't for the virus, so... I like a lot of 4-stars, too. There's a lot of 4, you know, Kane is Penn, stuff like that, uh, Fionn. Although, I don't think I put him up there. Fionn's not up there with, like, Ku and, and Billy and stuff, but, uh... I like a, a lot of 1-3-stars, to stars, though. Like, a VC Braun, Ku, Billy, Robin, Darius, uh, you know, Bedivere... There, there's a lot of there's a lot of one to three three so, and Kojiro Kojiro Sanson Kojiro and Sanson are so high for me. Um, yeah, actually, four stars get a bit wrecked now that I think about it because like my absolute top, you know, is like Ku, Gilgamesh, Proto Ku, Achilles, Mordred, VC Braun, you know, uh, Kojiro, Sanson, Hyde, uh, Jekyll and Hyde, uh, Billy, Robin. You know, like, like that, th there's really no four stars there. Like, it, it takes a second. You know, and I really do like, you know, Pence and Canis and stuff, but they're not quite up, quite, you know, they're not quite, uh, you know, like a VC Braun or, or Koo level or anything. I would love it if they added Zeus for, I would love it if they added Zeus for loss or for the anniversary, but I don't know if that's going to happen. I've talked about Sanson so much, I think I'm gonna- I'll leave it up to Chad. You want me to blab about Sanson again or not? I feel like over the years, I've talked about why I like Sanson so many times. I- 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 I, I don't know, I think I'm gonna be annoying people at that point, but, uh... Um, alright, hold on, what do you mean? What are we doing here? Do it? Okay, hold on. Hmm, I, there's actually a part of me that's like wanting to make the stars. Nah, I'll do this. So there, there's there's a, a, a lot of reasons. There's there's a, a mess of reasons. Um, so first, I, I guess I'll go why I initially liked the character at all. So FGO was you know released and it was a shit show back in the day. It had no hard content. Had a terrible business model. Uh, you know, it, it just awful. And it was it was famous for being like a cash grab and really bad when it first came out. So I didn't play it. I loved Fate. I loved Fate way before FGO. I was a huge fan of Fate. I remember when FGO was announced, I was like, oh god, it's a mobile game. Because you gotta remember, mobile games still, I think, have a pretty bad reputation, right? And some of that's deserved, absolutely. But there's there's been more and more mobile games that are good, right? I feel like there's, there's been more and more mobile games that have been made. They're like, oh, this is a good game, right? But there's still, I'd say there's still way more, you know, horrible mobile games. But it is what it is. But back then, back when FGO came out, it had the worst, like, phone games just had the worst reputation ever, way worse than they are now, and there really weren't any good examples of, of good phone games, right? They were pretty much all cash grabs. So the second I heard FGO was a phone game, I was like, oh, God, right? And so I didn't play it, but I kept tabs on it. 
Uh, and I, I checked out a few characters, and you know, it's kind of I saved someone in the loop. So if they ever fixed it or made it better, because uh, a friend had told me, oh hey, Titan Moon's gotten more involved, and the business model's starting to get better. It was like, oh good. And then I then like I got into it because of uh, you know Camelot and everything. However, what I'm getting at, this might be like, how was it the fuck does that have to do with Sansa? Uh, what I'm getting at is uh, I had not kept tabs on the game so well that I knew every character that was in it. I absolutely had not. I had just kept tabs on like Darius because he had like the anime trailer, you know, and, I, and I, I, I just happened to catch one to Billy the Kid, and I'm a huge Billy the Kid fan in real life and stuff, so I was like, it's one of my favorite parts in history. So, you know, I knew of that, I knew of Edmund, uh, and, and, and like the Face of Night characters being in and all that stuff, I knew Koo was a three star and all that, but I just had, I had never known that Sansa was in the game. I had never seen his picture, and I, didn't, I had no idea he was in the game, along with many other servants. And so way down the line, when I finally go to play the damn game, and I'm kind of like scanning through the story, even though I couldn't read it because it was Japanese, but I kind of scanned through the story to see what's going on. Uh, one, of the the, one of the first characters I had seen that I did not know of in some way, because I knew Billy was in the game and I wanted to get Billy and that kind of stuff, and you know, I was summoning random people from the support list, um, but nobody slots Sansa in, right? Literally no one slots Sansa in, so I had no idea Sansa was in the game. Uh, and so he was the first design that I saw that I didn't know who it was. I had seen plenty of characters, like, I don't know who that is. Right, like I think I saw a plot monk. I'm like, who the fuck is that? And I didn't really care for the design or anything, so I, did, I was like, whatever. I, anyone that I saw that was like, oh, that's awesome, it's because they were from Fate Say Night, or Fate Zero, or Fate Apoc, or I had happened to have already known they were in the game, like Darius and Billy. So I hadn't seen anything that I you know, knew that I was like, oh, what's that? What, what's that thing? That's cool, right? Sanson was the first thing. He showed up with Lancelot. I know I like Lancelot. Lancelot's cool. So I see Lancelot popping up, and then he shows up with this other guy. I'm like, who's dad? That guy looks kind of cool. Why is he hanging out with Lancelot? Like, yeah, that's cool. He had a little boss battle with him and all that. Uh, and then so I looked up who it was, and uh, I knew who Sanson was at that point. You know, I like history a lot, so I, I knew who he was, but I didn't know who he was that well. I, I just vaguely knew there was a famous, like, executioner during the French Revolution and stuff. Uh, and like he, uh, you know, he was kind of known in that period, but I didn't, I didn't really know that much about it. I was like, oh yeah, that's that one kind of famous French execution, but I don't really know who that is. And it actually got me to look into him in real life, and so I was like, oh, I like that design and stuff, so I looked into him in real life more, and kind of learned what he was about and stuff. And I think he's a pretty interesting person in, in history, uh, because he's a pretty conflicted person with, uh, you know, he wanted to be a doctor, but he had to be an executioner because his father got ill, had to keep the family going. Uh, and he's just got he kind of mixing. He knew the common folk really well. He liked the common folk. He also knew royalty really well because he was the head executioner. So he kind of knew both sides of it. But he ultimately sided, you know, with, with the quote unquote justice, if you will, and kind of carried out the will of the people and all that. Blah 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 blah. And then, so I thought that was interesting. And then I thought he represented that pretty well in game because he has a fucking heal skill, which is a reference to the fact that he had uh, trained to be a doctor before becoming an executioner. And like he even gave out his like healing services for free. Uh, he didn't charge like common folk. Uh, if they needed, uh, you know, medical care or anything like that. And so I thought that was really, uh, that was a really good nod. They had, like, some nice, you know, subtle nods in his bio to his conflicted nature about, like, kind of being on both sides of it and kind of having... Com he was really conflicted about executing people, right, and killing people, right? But it needed to be done, and somebody had to do it, right? So they just did a really good job of representing that. So I'm like, okay, I liked his design. He was the first character that, uh, that kind of piqued my interest. And then I saw, oh, hey, they actually put a, a good bit of effort into representing what he was about in real life in the game. The one weird thing they did, which I noticed this right away, but I'll give them a pass because I think it kind of worked. But the one weird thing they did with Sanson is they have him be the one that executed Antoinette, but he did not do that. His son did that. And also Sanson's appearance in the game is more akin to what you might think of of his son, like as he's younger and stuff. By the time all that stuff happened, Sanson was a bit older. Uh, you know, he'd been doing the job for a while. Uh, so they kind of fused his son with himself, but they had the same name, so you can kind of get away with it. But I, I did find that kind of weird that they did that. But other than that, I think they did a good job with Sansa. I like his design, I like his voice actor, I like the whole conflicted nature thing. I like how he wanted to be a doctor, and that's after he actually represented in the game. Unfortunately, he's fucking trash, and is awful, uh, which is why I grailed him to 100, because you gotta, you know, you gotta, you gotta help him as much as you can, because it's not so good. I really wish I had my NP right now. Uh, it's really unfortunate that I don't. I'm kind of wasting my crit buff here. What the fuck is our- what the fuck is our CE? Like, uh... How do I not have my MP right now? Yeah, we're losing so much value for not having our MP. That's why starting MP is, like, almost always the right thing to go with. It depends on the servant and circumstances, but... I'd say for, like, 90% of units and 90% of the boss fights, starting MP is meta. And it's not just meta, it's so much more meta than everything else. 
Although here, Black Grail might be meta just because her hit count is so fucking high. Black Grail would actually be nuts here. The not in ping there was. It's, it's just terrible. Like, I, I can't put into words how bad that was because I'm so behind now. I'm gonna lose my crit buff before I crit any. Uh, there's just so many things that are bad here. I'm actually gonna shuffle. I'm gonna hope I get lucky and get better quick crits here. Just, nope, they got worse. I, I feel like that was worth the risk because... Oh god, I'm just gonna restart. This is just horrible. Like, this is so bad. No, BB cannot solo Kiara, what the fuck? BB is not a good solo unit in, in any world. Like, even against an Avenger, she's not a good solo unit. Like, there are a variety of units that can solo that fight, but they're all, if you've noticed, they're all like really good solo units like Ku, Gramps, and Kidu, you know, that kind of thing. I wouldn't even say BB's that. I think she's meh. I, I think BB is one of the most overrated units in the game. I don't think she's trash. Overrated doesn't mean bad. Um, but people have this idea that she's like some god tier 4 star, and then I don't see anything to show for it at all. Like, her performance is pretty meh. And sometimes meh is all you need, sure, but uh, by the way, Okita doesn't actually exist anymore. Um, support system is really great in this game. I mean, Moon Cancer can be good, it's just her kit doesn't actually work with it very well, so... Like, if you're fighting an Avenger, BB still doesn't make a good damage dealer. The best thing about it, and see, it's honestly terrible. Like, her class sucks for her. Because she's mostly a support. She's mostly a support that does a little bit of damage, but she's overwhelmingly a support. Now, supports are fine. And if your support is counterclassing the enemy, that's okay. If Iris Veal is counterclassing an assassin, you're not like, oh, but she can't DPS the assassin. That's not a big deal. It's like, oh, hey, she's really tanky against the assassin, so that's good. But you fight Avengers so rarely that BB counterclassing almost never comes up. So she's not even like being tanky very often. Like BB would be better as almost any other class in the game. Like yeah, she'll, she'll be a better support than normal when you're fighting an Avenger boss. But then there's still better supports than her and there's way better DPS's than her. Okay, so Akita is dead. Guys, I can't, I can't believe Akita is dead. She, uh, she coughed and that was that. But we'll try one more time here. Who would you say is the best Moon Cancer Surf in me, Beastly Whale? Uh, Alright, let's see. Yeah, Okita's gone. Well, if I'd known we weren't going to ever get her again, I would have uh, kept trying. But like that was just so all not meta, it was painful. I wanted to uh, see if we could actually get her NP before the start, but I'm guessing she uh, had a zero starting in PCE. Oh, there, there it is again. Yeah, that is not a, 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 a great one. That's the one I think it is. And then Jenical with the five subs. Thank you, Jenical. You've done 45 gifted subs. God, what is what is what is wrong with you all? You just just throwing your fucking money away. I mean, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. But uh, Jesus, man, thanks, dude. All right, let's see if we can not uh, fuck this up here. So, Jenical, are you looking forward to the fifth year anniversary? Because I know I am, and I'm I'm just bracing for. Uh, I'm just bracing for uh, disappointment. Mosquitoes, dude. Yeah, we're not even close to getting our NP. Hey, 
Hey, I I am very grateful people like my 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 stream and, and stuff, dude. That is, I I I'm very grateful for that. I just you know I don't I don't want people going overboard if, if the uh, you know can't afford it. Gotta 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 keep people responsible. And this is even worse than last time. This sucks so bad, dude. Let me just do this. I don't think they're gonna do the low stars again. That was so much work, uh, and they're so lazy that I, I'm surprised they even did it at that time. I, I, I'd be very happy if they added more lower stars, but I... Maybe they add one? Maybe they add one. But yeah, I don't I don't think that's gonna be a pattern. Like, I, I was shocked that they, that they even did it at that time. Hey, Saber Nero. Guess I don't reroll. Oh, please crit. For the love of God, please crit. Thank you for the hundred and something bits, hundred and some odd bits. Uh, still can't say your name. Uh, your I uh, just your wrist or did or something. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I don't want memorial quests. I want them to add story replay. I'm so tired of memorial quests. I, I, I honestly, I've gotten to the point where I dislike memorial quests because they're insulting. Like, they, they are. They're insulting. It's like, yeah, we could do story replay, but instead we're just going to cherry pick, like, you know, six stages that you get to replay for a week. Like, I'm so tired of that. Like, I want to be able to just fucking replay the goddamn story whenever I want. Because it, it doesn't feel good, especially from a video making perspective. It's like, oh, they brought Zeus back and you have one week to have fun and that's it, right? That's that's lame, dude. Like, that's so lame. And there's no variety. That means everyone is going to make Zeus videos, right? Instead of, like, you know, it, the, the different variety of people getting to show off different things at different times and stuff. Like, I don't, I do not like memorial stages. I, I prefer it over nothing, sure. But, like, it's, at this point, it's, we're five years in. And we can't replay the goddamn story. We get they, we, they get to tell us which stages we get to replay for one week, right? It's just that's stupid, man. Like it's just got, I've gotten to the point where I just find it completely insulting. Uh, wow, we looped our NP. Now that's that's nice. This is where I wish I had the quick up and the attack up and everything, but uh, we wouldn't made as many stars then. Also, I don't think they're gonna bring back Zeus yet. They might bring him back next year, but I feel like this year they wouldn't do it. It's like, I think, like with with the, I don't know. This is not a lot of information to go off of. This is just kind of a gut feeling. I, yeah, of course you didn't crit. It's like I think the reason they brought back Asclepius last year was because Lost Belt Four was so new. They didn't want to bring back something really memorable and stuff. It's like y'all just did this, so we don't want to like tarnish the epicness by just instantly bringing it back again. I, I really think they knew Asclepius was a lame boss fight, and that's why they brought that back. So I feel like if they did bring back a fight, they'd bring back like the twins or something. Like, I, I don't think they're gonna bring back one of the... Uh, like, I don't think they're gonna bring back Demetur or Zeus. Although I would love it if they brought back Demetur because that's the one everyone's afraid of. Like, that, that would be very funny to me if they brought uh, that one back. Huh. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna count on her giving me my INP from her attacking me, so... Musashi fight in the Olympics. If they made it harder, that'd be alright. That's an okay fight to solo, though, but... You had kinda needed Chin Gong, I think. I feel like there was some weird gimmick there that needed that, but I can't remember. Yeah, they need to add a training room. I remember Toho Sniper said that on his stream, and I love that idea. Just had a zero AP training room, and you're allowed to manipulate things. Like you can spawn different like training dummies, and you can just give yourself NP and things like that. That way you can, you know, test things and, and you know get more accurate data and stuff like that. I think that would be really nice. Okay, I'm gonna reroll these stars because the Buster cards got all the crits there. A little bit better. I'd like if they brought back Demature. That would actually be nice. 
kind of want to do it again anyway because everyone bitched about that fight and I know there's I know all kinds of other ways to beat it and everyone was like, oh yeah, you can Toki. I swear no matter what you do, it's going to be something. Like literally no matter what you do, it's going to be something. Also, ow. I should have healed so much earlier in the fight because I, I, I could have healed and then gotten it off cooldown. So I'm quite confident Okita can solo this. The only reason she's not is because this CE is scuffed as hell and uh, we also have no command codes whatsoever. But uh, I'm quite sure if you put in the effort, uh, Okita can definitely solo this. Also, I don't, I'm not sure this Mystic Code is right either. I think uh, I might mess it up. And thank you Blue Notes for the 100 bits. Wow, we're already almost dead. See, again, just a little bit more value, and I wouldn't have to evade here. And I could save the evade for the NP next turn. Which I'm gonna try anyway, just because if I if I evade here, we gu we're guaranteed to lose, where she might not kill us this turn, so. But she probably will. But yeah, with just a little bit more value, we would uh, be in much better shape. And if you can survive until you evade, that's so good, because then you heal twice without getting attacked, so you get 6,000 life back. Oh, and, uh, that, that's not a name, R re, re, re I, I, what is, look, okay, chat, what the, okay, D-Bull, I can handle D-Bull, right, I got that, thank you for the 100 bits, how are you supposed to say this name, like, I swear, you know, I'm always bitching about names, but then everybody, it just, like, the, the, nothing's capital, right, like, it's not a word, it's not a na like, what is that? You're killing me! Like, Jesus Christ! Like, saying R-I-W-L does not help! Uh, he's a big deal, lol. Uh, okay, okay, let's see here. Uh, we need to actually beat this. Um... I don't want to use one of my own units. Oh no, I, 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 I assume Achilles could do this. It'd be a lot slower because he's... Hey, we know. I kind of want to try uh, Achilles, though. I I'm so sure he can do this, because there's no world where he can't. And then I, I, I kind of hate doing stages like this, because a lot any unit I summon and stuff, I basically give them a bad rep, because everybody can solo this, really. But it's a matter of if you like set them up properly, and I can't set them up properly, so I, I feel like I'm making lo units look bad that uh, otherwise shouldn't look bad. And then for like my units, I don't want to respec, you know, every fucking unit I'm going to use, so. Like, my guy's coup, right? That's, that's the one I put effort into. Although even though my coup's not set up properly right now, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, he is a rider, but like, riders still do okay damage, so. But yeah, it will be harder, but I, I think he might be able to still do it. Honestly, if he can't do it, it's not because he's a rider, although that will be part of it. It's the fact that he's a writer and he's AoE. I think if he, was, if he had the same toolkit and everything and he was a writer and he was single target, I think he would be fine. But, uh... The issue, I think, is definitely gonna be... Also, if I gave him command codes, I think he'd still be... I think the heal boost command code would just be so fucking strong here. Oh, hey, it's my login streak on my alt account. Uh, shame y'all can't see that, but I just got 30 SQ. Feels good, man. Just in time for the anniversary. Although I, I, I'm not sure there's going to be anything I would need to roll on on my ult account, but uh... I think 100 face could do this too, even though it's a uh, alter ego. Again, would need good command codes, but. Uh... Going to anniversary with zero SQ, that's never good. I mean, I'm sure they'll give out a lot of SQ again. I don't think they're going to give out as many as they gave out in anniversary three, because I don't think they did in anniversary four. And also, they just they just gave out so much. Also, I should like be playing music. Um, but they gave out so much in anniversary three. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Five. Like I said, five is a big number, and I think this one's going to be special. So I'm, I don't know. Maybe they do give out a little extra.
So I think uh, Achilles might fail just because of the command codes. Like I think he's gonna be pretty close. Even, again, even though the coach didn't alter ego, but I, I, am, I, I do feel like I'm gonna need uh, like a way to offset the normal card damage a little bit better. Because it's not like we're gonna have amazing da you know, damage with being AoE and all that. Well, I can use the off turn one if I want to. Or if I do or don't, that really depends on what cards we get. Only really odd number of good special treatment. Okay, that is not an NP hand. Not at all. I was hoping for like a quick card. Yeah, Achilles is good, man. Good for farming, good for boss fights, it's nice. Unfortunate that we have no crit chance this turn, but that's what happens when you BBB. She'd probably want, like, just the pretty standard fare, like Gilgamesh on something, uh, Santa Altar on something, maybe Star Absorb on something, and maybe some survivability. Like, the 1k heal is a pretty damn good command code. It doesn't really matter that it's got a cooldown, because you just put it on a card that you don't use every turn, and that's just kind of how you fix that. Okay. Hmm. I don't think it's, I don't know if it's actually worth it to use my third skill here. I'm just gonna overcharge so hard. Because it doesn't give me enough to get my MP right now. But if I use it now, I can do my cooldown reduction now. I shouldn't though, because then I'm wasting the heal. The longer I'm staying at 100% life, it's actually kind of bad. This is really wonky. Did I just fail a 90% crit? Oh, that doesn't matter, we broke anyway, but still. I forgot what the crit in that buster was, but uh... Really? I like how not only did she crit, but she buster crit. Which, for going off the, the previous runs, that has not happened really at all. Like, she just instantly buster crits. Like, almost anything else I could have recovered from there. That's some bullshit. That's what I get for not casting my invulnerability, because I could have. I just didn't. I always like when you use a unit though that's like at a major disadvantage and then you get like then you get bad luck. And then you like when you're using a unit that's gonna win anyway, then they get good luck. Okay. That's just I I have to try this. It's one of the only stages in the CC event that doesn't count as water. Almost all of them do.
I gotta say, it's pretty bad luck that we use our battery skill and then we just get nothing, so I can't get my MP. That really sucks, that means I wasted my first skill because I would've gotten my MP this turn no matter what. That is, I hate when stuff like that happens, man. Because it's got nothing to do with skill, it's just luck, and it's like... Especially when it's like, it's so in your favor, uh, but then, uh, if it goes bad, you know, it's super bad for you, and then you get unlucky and it, it goes bad. Like, that's it's really frustrating. I actually kinda wanna face tank this. So we gotta start getting value out of the heal. I think we can afford to. I guess the one good thing about all this is we can uh, see red press red because we're gonna get our NP no matter what. Squirrel. I know what that is. I don't think I have one on my friends list, I don't think. And if I do, they probably haven't logged in or they have a fucking stupid CE or something. I always say, if you want to suggest- WHAT?! How did Mordred face tank that, but she did- okay. Um... Let me try that again. I don't think she's gonna beat this just because of the lack of survivability. But, uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I always say, if you're gonna suggest something, I really prefer people only suggest things that they have. Because then you can be like, yo, can you use X? I have X and I can send you a friend invite. And so if I want to use it, I can just use it. Otherwise, it's like, people will sell these random units and I'm like, well, how the fuck am I supposed to do that, right? It's like, because then I have to try to find someone that has it, and it's, it's, it's like, that's not, that's not really applicable. So yeah, she has the damage, because her third skill works here, so she can wreck this so fast, but she, I don't think she has the survivability. I kind of want to use something that actually makes sense. We're using a lot of stupid shit that's like really not applicable to this stage. And then like, we're not- we're literally not doing any of the things that allow you to solo this. Like, there's so many things you can do to basically- you can make such a trash unit solo this, but we're not doing any of those things, so... We're kinda just... doing nothing. I wanna try Achilles one more time, because I, I don't think he's good here, just cause... Ryder. Like, that, that's ridiculous that he can get one shot. But I think we can do better than we did. Yeah, Lan Lane can definitely do this. Because not only is he the right class, but he has hard survival and then so much soft survival, he'll never take any damage, like, from the normal cards, like, ever. Hey, Infinity Biscuit, what's up, man? No, the twins will still be good here. They don't need the resist down to loop. Like, are you kidding me? Like, oh no, we don't have a minor card defense down, and meanwhile the boss has a hit count of a million. Like, they are absolutely going to loop every single turn, and then they have a hard survival skill. Like, that's one of the biggest things is having a hard survival skill. So you, you can use the hard survival to not die to the NP, and then it gives you two turns of healing, basically, right? Like, that, that's the big thing. Like, if Passion Lip had a hit count of one... Oh my god, I'm so sick of getting horrible fucking hands when you're using a unit that's just like so disadvantaged. Good god. But yeah, like, if, if Passion Lip, all of her stuff had a hit count of one, then maybe they'd have a hard time. But I think they probably could still do it because they still have the exact kind of toolkit that you need. Like, they're, they're a knight class, they're single target, they have an invulnerability skill, and it's not on a long cooldown. Like that alone, like that alone, they already win. And then plus they have a bunch of other shit. Yeah, Goddess Essence works as Divine. I really do need to get a- uh, this stage really is starting to make me get a headache. I'm just gonna- if, if I fail, which I probably will, because this is Achilles, I'm probably just gonna use Q again and get this over with, because... I was kind of just surprised so many of those other units just did so badly, like, what the fuck? You know what? I probably should have third skilled there. 
I should have I double quick. I should have third skilled an impede right there. That's a pretty big mistake. Wait, I hadn't cast. What the fuck is wrong with me? I didn't cast his second skill ahead of time. Okay, I, I'm seriously getting a headache. I'm just gonna move on. Like, this is just getting annoying. Like, the background is really starting to bother me, and I'm kinda tired of using, using scuffed units. And if I really wanna try to do something whack in that stage, I'm gonna do it on my ult account where I can. Do it on my own time. Yeah, I'm sure Canis can handle this. I should have done it in Kidu just to laugh at this fight, but uh... That's just, I really should have though, it is funny to see how, like, she doesn't have threat to humanity, but she is also divine, so you still get the stun, and like, that's just... Okay, fine, we'll do in Kidu, why not? He doesn't have command codes, but, well, we'll do something. We already, we already did it with Ku, so... They add more good command codes soon because like right now oh my god dude anyway uh right now you know there's really only enough good command codes to really pimp out like one and a half units and then there's a few command codes that are good for very specific people um but, like who has just has such a monopoly on my like, command codes that are worth a fuck and then have like a lot of like meh other stuff like i really want to get some other units better command codes and uh I don't know, so the last chunk of command codes they've added have been kind of eh, eh. Good lord. I like how we've just fucking all- uh, It's a good thing we're using in Kidu because these hands have been so bad. Like, an art chain is so pointless because that, that emote combo, by the way. But, uh... Like, an art chain is so pointless, we we're gonna get our NP anyway. Like, who cares? So what really gives messes with me and makes me like feel nauseous is whenever I cast a skill and like zooms in and it changes the perspective of the background. That's really what uh, sucks. I mean, really, just more general use ones because like there's enough good command codes. Like there's enough. There's already enough good effects. There's just not enough of them, so you can't spread them out at all. Like really, I I prefer duplicates of what we have over anything new. Really. And also, you can just give different rarities and stuff. They've already done that, where they add something and they add, like... Like, we got that four Stargen Santa Alter one. When I, I swear when I say Stargen, it, it's, it's, I hate that effect, by the way. Because it's like, you got the star creation, if that's what I should say. You have the star creation, which makes a set amount of stars. And then star generation up. Those, those ultimately work very differently, even though they're both for making stars. And that has always annoyed me, because it's really hard to distinguish between the two of them, and I think you confuse the fuck out of people when you talk about them. Uh, anyway, but like the Santa Alter one makes four stars, and then we have a million that make two. So make like make a four star version that makes three, right? Like that stuff like that. Like Buster crits are the only thing they've done like every rarity ever for. And so you have, like you have you run the gamut on like the crit damage up and stuff like that. Uh. Mm. Guess that. That's kind of a weird thing to do, but those are good crit chances, so... Hey, TF, what's up, man? 29 months. I just failed, uh, crits there. That's, uh, that's great. 
Bane scat them out, you coward. One of these days. Uh, I've been trying to get emotes made, but it's going really slow right now. Dude, Enkidu is so broken here. Because the stun just buys him more time to get more healing. Might have to like hire a new artist or something. Well, she guarded the defense down, that's kind of lame. There was a lot of damage. Although she has God Assessments, so... I mean, it's more like a six months plus badge. I mean, people always give me shit about that, but what am I gonna- like, what are you gonna do? Like, I like- I like the sub badge we have, and what are you gonna do? Give the axe more blades? Like, make it a quad-bladed axe? Like, how- what the fuck? Someone's gonna say yes. Literally so- yeah, and I was saying yes. Yeah, okay. I, I walked into that. I walked into that. I mean, it's a command spell that kind of looks like an axe. That's- that's the idea. It's an axe-inspired command spell. Right. Why would it be bamboo? So, he actually has so much value that I basically don't need to do anything. Like, I don't really need my third skill. The only way I would need my third skill right now is if she triple buster crits. But that's not really that likely. I mean, you can mouse over it if you got FFZ and you can like see it really clearly and see what it is. I, I don't see how that can be bamboo though, because like, what would the what would the the lower tier ones be? I I, I mean, if that's what people see, that's what people see, and I, I see weird shit. Like on our Discord, and you can't see people's icons very well. I see all kinds of stupid shit that's not there. Like, dear God, but uh, I, I'm always curious to like what the logic is and stuff. They don't start that tree stuff. Rex is in here. Oh, hi, Rex. Uh, quick, d d distract him. I, I have no, uh, I, I have no excuse here. We're not talking about trees, Rex. We're not. Dude, I can't believe these skipped her rate up. That- that really was fucked. Can I break? Mmm. I mean, I could NP. I'd rather NP next turn, though. But I'm gonna get 200% overcharge, but it is what it is. I'll try to break here. Something crit, please. Oh, you know, I should be doing triple qu quick so much more. I, 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 you're supposed to do that. If you watch, like, if you're really getting serious in Kiru, you're supposed to use triple quick pretty often. Um... This is actually really bad, though. I'm taking way too long to break this health. I mean, it's not- we're not gonna lose, uh, I don't think, but I am wasting so much fucking time right now. Like, I, I could've NP'd and then, even for, like, really low value, and just in got my NP back again. So, there was, like, no reason not to do that.
Oh well. The good thing in Kiryu's so strong, it doesn't matter. Yeah, his third skill fucking removes debuffs and is the largest healer in the game. It's kind of good. Yeah, we can't stun her anymore. Bit of an oh shit. Look at her! First of all, uh, she's like super debuff immune and <laughs> she's got a lot of defense up there. So I've never healed. I I've literally never healed. I, I could've ca cast it so long ago, had it come off cooldown, and then used the cooldown reduction on it. But there's just... There has not been any need because the boss just doesn't have enough damage output. Yeah, you're supposed to do quick chains because they result in good MP gain and then critting for more MP gain and then like maybe critting on your MP turn and stuff and that's where you get massive damage. So, huge mistake for me to not be using quick chains more, but it, it doesn't matter. I guess the one nightmare is insta-death. That is the one thing... So you really should save up your stuff so you can end her rightly, uh, very quickly, right? You want her to die really fast in this phase. Because the one way you're gonna get wrecked is if you get insta-death. You could give him a gut CE though to make up for that. Yeah, I mean, who did this before his MP upgrade and all that stuff? And hell, he was level 94 and he wasn't 10 10 10. Just getting 10 10 10 made, uh, made it a lot easier. I think he's dead here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you want to set it up so you can really do big bursts on that last health bar so you don't have to uh, get insta death. I think the odds are pretty low, but still. If I had to do that, like, for a bet, so I didn't want any chance of bad RNG ruining me, I would give him a gut CE as a backup. Because he's got enough value early. And basically, any value I lose in the early bars, I'd make up by just using my third skill in the early bars. Because I'm not going to need it later. Uh, and then you have the guts later in the fight, and that would make you so much safer. That'd be, like, the, the way that you're definitely not losing. I have no idea. Is this, I have no idea what this is. Is this a demon pillar? That's only I can think of. Is maybe it's the demon pillar. Uh, if it is, I kind of- uh, what do I want to do? I want to do something stupid. Let me think. I do Arthur, because he's large. Let's- let- let- let's- I'm- I'm gonna- I'm gonna bet that this is the demon pillar. And, uh, we're gonna... We're gonna get really dumb here. I actually do feel a bit woozy because that stage, man, I should have finished it off sooner. Let me think. We've got to really min-max this. Let me get all the pieces out so I kind of get an idea of what I want to do. So ideally, we want somebody to die from Poster Girl, then we yeet the next one with Chen. And those two both need to have three turn buffs. So, Merlin has three turn buffs, so we can actually double yeet Merlin. Um, my Merlin actually is exceptional at being a poster girl person. Oh, I don't remember, this demon pillar might be AoE. A lot of demon pillars are. There's a few that are single target, but he might be AoE, and if that's the case, I'd have to change how I do this. Because then Chin would probably die first. I could give Chin a survival CE, but then he might not be able to yeet in time. He's not 
gonna need a CE that strong. Give them something that's better for the budget. So we have 50% battery from from Mer double Merlin Chin. So I want to get Shakespeare in here, I think. Because then uh, Arthur's got 20%, so that's 70%. And with uh, Shakespeare, that's 90%. So you'd only need to get 10%, which you'd probably get from being attacked or anything like that. I'm going to I'm gonna have to change this a bit if he ends up being AoE. So let's see, Merlin even at level 70 has 13,000 health. Are you fucking kidding me? That is crazy. Thankfully, I'm not even looking at chat right now, Rex. I, it's, I never look at chat when I'm making teams generally because it's, it, if, you're, if you're thinking and trying to go through CEs and stuff, there's like no reading chat anyway, and then yeah, you normally have people trying to spoil shit, so. They definitely switch this to code. The best part is, is this is not a demon pillar, and then we try to see what we what we do with with this setup. I think we're gonna have to cut the poster girl thing though. Merlin is just too tanky. The only let me think, because good god, he has almost as he much health as Arthur. Hmm. If we cut that, then we would just do Chen and then just do the Switch Mystic Code, so that would mean Nightingale would get cut. That's still loads of damage for the lulls, but uh, it's not quite as much as we could get. Alright, we'll, we'll do it like that. We'll bring Nightingale in case this does turn out to be a single target, because I, I should have the team cost to do everything I want to do, I think. Let's see, if this if this enemy's AoE, you would Chen Gong to get rid of Merlin. After turn one. Actually I think you would do it on turn one. And then another Merlin would come in, and then you'd use the switch mystic code. Right, okay. But if it if it's single target, I get you to get more. I get to get a little bit more. Deep sin. The hard part's gonna be Arthur NP gain. So I don't want to stun the demon pillar turn one. Oh my god, if this is Tamcat, I'm gonna laugh my ass off, but uh. Any chance, sir, you would like to be a single target demon pillar? There's like a, a grand total of three demon pillars like that or something. Like this. fuck all. I could give Merlin defense down and then you give him the taunt and chin if that is the case. Do I just buff right now? I guess I just buff right now. Because yeah, if, if there's no way for me to know, there's no way for me to know if I should yeet Merlin this turn or not. Because I don't know if the, if the demon pillar is AOE or not. I mean, I'm... I'm pretty sure he's AoE, because most of them are, but, uh... Also, even if he's single target, he might not kill Merlin in one turn, so... He might still have to eat right off the bat. For science! Some, sing uh, some demon pillars also are single target when they crit. That looks very AoE. Oh, yeah. Kind of cool animation, though. Alright, let's see. Do I still have time to do everything I need to do? I think so. Being behind a turn there is not that big of a deal. I don't think. So we eat our boy. Well, we did have defense up and damage cut, so that, that hurts him. And I think his shtick is critting, because he gave himself crit buff, so I'm guessing his big shtick is critting. I'm wondering if his crit, though, is single target. That would be nice. I do go. 
Okay. I'm disappointed that we're not really getting that many buffs in, but it's still enough to do a lot of damage, so... Chat, dare we do our Buster card first just to see the damage, but I think it there's a chance it'll kill it. Now, we only have one of Merlin's crit buffs, because the way we did this, we don't get both. Um, I, what, do you want, what do you want to see, chat? Do you want to see the crit or the NP? Okay, people, I think with the crit. It's a bit split. I'll tr we'll, we'll, I'll do it in second place, so there's a chance we still get the MP. Both coward? I mean, if it happens, sure, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Also, Merlin with the damage. 600k! And that, we could have, by the way, we could have set that up. We could have set that up so we would have had both of Merlin's crit buffs. Right, like we just changed the order. We just didn't know, that, you know, how the boss is gonna go. Um, so it actually could have been a lot higher than that. Good God, I think you fight him again, so we can do that one more time. I didn't kill the app because I'm pretty sure you fight this guy twice. So. We'll save Scum on the next one, so we can get, uh, and we'll try to set it up where we get both Merlins on the same turn. Although, actually, it's kind of hard to get Merlin, both Merlins on the same turn, because of the way Chin works. You could eat Nightingale, then? The problem, then, is in peak gain. You'd have to wait. You basically would need Arthur to get a good opening hand. And like wait a turn or two to do the whole blammo. Okay, this is Gozen. I gotta be careful though. We gotta look out for a stage that we want to keep forever, right? We don't want to just kill every boss and be like, well, we're fucked. Um, God, it's already 7.30. What? Um, anyway, let's see. We haven't unlocked any of the other one quests, have we? I know we've unlocked a few. Hardly any though. Like preferably, I want to have as many one quests as possible by the time we find a boss that we want to keep around. I really don't remember what this stage is. Alright, people wanted Archer or Toria. We'll do that. This isn't exactly the stage they wanted it for, but... Tough. Good, she's MP2. MP2 helps her so much. Because it's not just the damage, but it makes it easier to use your heal and that kind of stuff. Rising into one Artoria feels bad. Yeah, that does hurt her a lot. Because, first of all, she's one of the units that loops her NP the easiest, right? So she NPs over and over and over and over. So that bonus damage you're applying many, many, many times. And then on top of that, it makes her uh, second skill a lot better if she's NP2. I don't know if it's correct to get rid of this right now, because there might be other debuffs that are a bigger deal. I, like, never see anyone use this art for her. It's always stage three. And sometimes the one with the jacket, which I don't remember which one that is, but if I had her, I'd go with the one with the jacket. That one's the best. I feel like this is the one you would think would be the most popular, but I really just don't see this one very often. I didn't crit. I mean, I didn't taunt. What the fuck? Uh, I, I, I can recover from this. There's actually a world where that's good, because... I wasn't able to kill one of those trash mobs there, so it kind of like it's kind of like the solo is starting now, 
Basically, that other turn didn't happen, and that's actually good because the first turn was so bad. Although this turn is pretty bad too. It's, that's actually kind of wild that I actually gave myself two turns instead of one turn at the start here, and we still might not. Okay, thank God she killed it. I might say, if we don't kill that with two turns. That was actually meta. I'm not even kidding. That was an accident, but that turned out to be meta because it allowed me to uh, potentially get through this first wave without taking any damage, and all the extra turns just give me cooldown off of the second skill. Like, that absolutely was good. In no world would I have thought of that ahead of time, but, uh... Yeah, I don't really like the third stage. The, the crown is just too much. The crown and cape is just too much for me. The rest of it's fine, I guess, but... Yeah, I like the jacket. The jacket's cool. But, uh, I would really never roll for Archer Artoria, so... Hmm... Six stars. Yeah, they actually did update her model a bit. They didn't update her particle effects much, so some of it's a bit awkward. Uh, like sometimes like her sprite ends up being better than like the things around it, but uh, overall it does look better. Hmm. Hmm. So I can heal next turn, which is important to note, because that means I don't necessarily need to kill two this turn. Hmm. I'm to really get the min-max value here. Maybe I just use my first skill? I mean, it's a six turn cooldown. So I can do my first skill, so I have the defense up, and I kill the one, probably kill the other one. Definitely get my MP back. Okay, so if I, if I do that, let's see, if I kill the one, kill the other one, and get my MP back, that doesn't, I don't need to get my MP back, though. I don't need the defense up, either. I think I just, I just think I just vanilla MP in our dart. Imagine doing all of this to just, like, a random trash block. Although, imagine doing that at all, to be honest. What a dick. Took my stars. Do I heal that- that was such little damage. That was such little damage, but it's a, such a short cooldown skill. So lore-wise, I don't understand that skill. Is she drinking her own mana? Like, I don't understand. Why would be drinking water lower your MP gauge? Like, I, I don't- I don't understand. I'm sure lore-wise it's like exerting energy to heal herself or some nonsense, but like... That's not what it looks like in gameplay. Hi, Caesar. You're about to have a bad time. Imagine if you had Star Absorb Command Codes on her art cards, dude. He's actually got one, but it's the, the two-star one. So I'm pretty sure there's servants that are so short that her big shot at the end there actually misses them. So we killed him, and we got 162 in feedback. Balance. They took my stars again. And so, like, I can heal now, and it doesn't even matter, right? Like, I, I have so much MP to spare, it's like, who cares? Again, that's why MP2 matters. Because if we had taken more damage there, we might have needed to heal. And if we're in MP1, you're stuck at 100%, and you can't heal there. That's why I've said, she's one of the units that excels from getting into. Everyone gets the biggest boost from MP1 to MP2. That's the most impactful MP rank out of all of them. And then, units that MP often get even more out of it because they're applying that bonus damage more often than most people and she MPs very often and then she also has a rather noticeable benefit for being able to go over also ow uh but for being able to go over a hundred percent so she the the performance jump for her from mp1 to mp2 is quite large That 
That dog was really trying to be the hero uh, unit at the end there. I was uh, not expecting that. I keep accidentally uh, bringing down my phone's top bar there. It still doesn't explain why she loses MP that much, so I'm <laughs> reading that. Also, uh, I like people that try to argue that summer summer servants are like serious. It's like they absolutely are not. Oh, we're time gated. Oh, we don't get to fight the demon pillar again. I'm sorry. If I realized that- oh wait, 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 no, no, no. This isn't time-gated. Yeah, that, 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 uh, see now I, now I have to listen to, to chat say what I'm already doing and, and all that stuff. Anyway, um, if, if the other fight of the demon pillar is time-gated though, which I'm hoping it's not, uh, but if it is, I should have saved scum, but, uh, it should be available. Lost. You mean Okita didn't die and MHX didn't install Jet Center? I know, right? Nothing left to time get it? Okay, feels good. I guess it makes sense. The maze event's about to start, so. this I'd love to get her 10 10 10 oh so yes this song is amazing but I'd love to get her 10 10 10 but Lancer gems I've got like three gold Lancer gems left so Um, jokes on you, game. My MP doesn't do any damage. What a, what a. But you also stole my cards, so there's, there's that. I'm trying to get one up on the game, and it's. I'm sitting here like, oh, game. I, my MP doesn't do any damage, and the game's like, nice cards, bitch. It's like, have you, have you looked at your health lately, George? How did he steal that many cards again? That This is bullshit. That means the first hand was all George cards. The second hand is mostly George cards. And then the third hand is, almost, is mostly the solo unit's cards. But we're never going to get to the third hand because the deck is going to get shuffled now. God damn it game. See, I, you, try to, you try to get smart with this game and you, you just pay for it. See, if the deck had been shuffled there, you know, we might have gotten, you know, for cards that turn. But we kind of get a free turn there, so... Still, it's annoying. Need her to kill this thing, but she's not going to. So I'd like to point out, uh, Beastly, that thanks to you, Basically, only the FGO community knows that this song exists. Because this song has one of the most whack ways of coming into it. But you're, I mean, it's true. Basically, only the FGO community knows that this song exists. So, for those that don't know, like, you know, FromSoft has, like, a, a sound studio that makes a lot of music for them and stuff. And they make very good music. And they make a lot of music like this, like this kind of vibe, right? This is kind of like a mix of, like, you know, Armored Core and a Gundam game, basically. And it's because... Famco got FromSoft to make a Gundam game because, you know, FromSoft makes a lot of mecha stuff. Uh, and so they made the soundtrack for it, and that's where this comes from, but they never released the soundtrack, and it was a really, like, niche game that most people don't even realize exists. Uh, 
And so it's got like this really good, you know, because a lot of people are aware of, of FromSoft's really good music now, especially Armored Core. Like Armored Core is pretty known now for having really good music. And this is like a, a really hidden like gem of a soundtrack because it's basically more Armored Core music from a non-Armored Core game. But the soundtrack was never released and the game never came out in the West. It was only in Japan and it wasn't even popular in Japan. So like, and it's not, none of the music is on YouTube. None of it. None of it's on SoundCloud. You cannot find this music fucking anywhere. Uh, but Beastly ripped it from the game, and then he shared the whole soundtrack with me, and uh, and so we you know, we used the music, and so now, and but only really only to the FCO community for the most part. So uh, yeah, it's kind of it's like the few people that played that Gundam game might know about that song, but they may not have noticed it, and, and then the FCO community. So and there's there's quite a few other songs on that soundtrack that are good too. There's uh, and they even had it's really awesome, dude, because then they also took some actual Gundam songs. They're like, you know, from anime and stuff, and they remixed them. And so they kind of have like a From Softy twist on some uh, Gundam songs from like Unicorn and stuff, so it's pretty cool. They keep just debuff spamming, and, I, and, and then George gets all the cards again. Then George gets all the cards. We're on turn five, and we haven't killed one of these guys, which is insane. And it's just because I just cannot get cards on the solo unit. I'm gonna have to like try to target switch here. It's really unfortunate. That's normally not how you want to use her NP, but I I'm gonna have to. Also, I'm gonna do buff removal so I get rid of all these defense downs and so I don't like, you know, melt. This is a really bad turn, but uh, what are you gonna do? I'd actually be really happy if this guy would crit me. Yeah, watch him just do three debuffs, so I should've waited. Like, it won't attack, so getting in the defense down wouldn't matter. Please crit me. Please crit me! Oh yeah, I'm in slow-mo for videos. Because in videos, I show it once, right, in full duration, and throughout the rest of the video, I abridge it, and it's a very easy NP to abridge. Uh, and I'm recording, I don't care if it's really slow, uh, but yeah, for streaming, that's terrible. Also, he didn't crit me. I need stars, I need to kill this thing, I need to get my MP. It's not good. Oh boy. Come on, got that defense, there you go, so they got the defense down going. Uh, I'm pretty sure she's permanent. She's just a random four star that can spook you. I think I have been spooked by her, I'm pretty sure. I'm almost a sh I, I, I'm almost positive I've been spooked by her. I don't see why I'd have NPC otherwise. Um oh god, what do I do? Uh Why aren't these assassins? If these were assassins, they, you know, they'd actually crit, and I'd actually be able to kill myself. It's not, uh, it's not happening, now. There we go, except, uh, that crit so hard that I, that was actually a net loss. Because, uh, I don't have two stacks in my buff. If you have two stacks, you get healed for more. Also, I didn't have, like, the crit damage down going on her. That's, like, the whole thing. You give them crit damage down, so their crits don't do any bonus damage. She's got a pretty. Uh, she's got a lot of weird stuff going on. She's probably one of the weirdest servants in the entire game. Like if she crits with her NP up, with her buffs from her NP still activated, she removes the enemy's buffs from attacking. But she has to crit to do that. So when she gets crit, she heals herself and the team. And then when she attacks, she applies crit damage down. You're in so much trouble right now. Also, her guts has two stacks, which is kind of cool. Yeah, 
Which can be really nice if you give her a gut CE, which you can't always afford to do that, but if you can, you basically have triple guts. Wait, what if this doesn't kill? Oh dear god, what if this doesn't kill? The music knows. Oh god. See ya, sir. Sir, is that Sir Mim? Sir Mim? We should kill, we got our buff. Oh yeah, and we got a crit too. We got a crit up buff so. She's a pretty fun unit. She's not the most practical by any means, but one of these isn't like the others. Damn, I wanted that to crit. We don't get like double crit this turn, we pretty much just lose. Like we we've got to get crit this turn. This is why she's way better against people that have like a crit gimmick or uh you know assassins. Okay, the shitty thing is though, she casts Guts, so I can't finish her off. Man, if I had gotten crit again, we would have gotten back to like, full health. We need a winner. It just sucks because she has Guts, so I can't even kill the, uh, the caster one. If I could get it down to just the Archer, we'd be in really good shape. Triple crit, please! Your guts! Oh my god, but we didn't crit. We would have killed her! If we had crit on that last card, we would have killed her, because we removed the guts. Oh god. Oh god. This sucks, I think we're gonna die. We, we get it down to just the fucking to just the archer, but I think we're gonna die now. I can target switch, but that doesn't help too much. Damn it! Because the problem is you have to live through the attack to get the heal. Like, it, it drains the health first, then it heals it. I mean, she's an archer, so her uh, she'll do very minimal damage to me. If she, like, quick crits me, we're good. If she busts or crits me, I think we might be dead. We got the music, though. Come on, come on, give me that quick crit. You bitch, and we're dead. Okay, well, it was close. By the way, if our skills were maxed, we would've won there. By the way, if we were 10 10 10, we, uh, we would've won. I wanna try that again. I've wanted to get her to 10 10 10, but she's such an impractical unit, it's hard to justify. And Romulus is gonna be my next 10 10 10 Lancer, because he's close. Give, give, give Lancer gems, please. I need so many. That song is called uh, Life and Ash. It's also made by the uh, Armored Core people. The, uh, they make really good music, man. Okay. 
Now that's a jumping music theme. Some Halloween stuff right there. Hmm, I could use our second skill to have debuff immunity, but they will wait. This isn't going amazing, but it is going slightly better than last time. I mean, eventually George gets so many defense downs, it's like surely he's going to die. If I could actually kill one of these, that would be great. But I don't think it's gonna happen. I think the other Sphinx NPC also, I don't think these guys do. I think they do it on their NP though. Well, these guys might do it on their NP actually, I'm not sure. I didn't get my MP, and I didn't kill one. That's pretty terrible. She also has buff removal resistance. Uh, that's what uh, this thing is. She just has a lot of niches. However, it doesn't give you 100% uh, buff removal resistance unless it's rank 10. I don't know if we're gonna get a Halloween this year. I think they might just do Saber Wars again. Like, that, that's kind of what I feel like, is when it's roughly Halloween time, they're just gonna do Saber Wars 3. Oh my, now you crit me. Now you fucking crit me. Oh my god. When I, when I don't have my MP, and I haven't done crit down to him. Why does why does it have to be like this? I can't believe I'm casting this, but I think I need to. Easily. Yeah, them actually rerunning that the Christmas event that they skipped would be nice too. That was that was messed up, man. I think they'll main interlude it. I think that's what they're gonna do. We'll see though. The whole reason they skipped it is dude, seriously, the reason they skipped it is because of a Reshigal. That's the whole reason. They they wanted an excuse to bring back a Reshigal, so they wanted uh, the other the older Christmas event. Uh, that's that, that's the whole reason they skipped it. It was just a Reshigal is so popular in the Babylonian anime. So, basically a Reshigal kill quest. How are we this behind? Like, how are we this behind? This is nuts. Yeah, I know, Fury, but it's way more hype if they do it the other way, because they're like, Oh, hey, guys, remember that Christmas event that's like a direct tie-in to Babylon? We just had a Babylon anime like that, like, because seriously, that, that that story just, you know, it gives more screen time to Reshigal and everything, so it was like, that was really good for them for sales. I have no idea what this song name is, because it's in Japanese, and I can't pronounce Japanese words, so. But it's from, uh... What is it called? Uh, M Modica, Magica, or whatever the fuck? Something like that. I don't remember that anime's name. Hmm. This is pretty bad. We've lost, unfortunately. I always find it funny because I have music from so many different corners of I don't know, the internet or whatever. Like I just I have stuff from all over the goddamn place, and sometimes there's definitely stuff that no one knows what the hell it is. 
But it's funny, there can be some pretty obscure shit and somebody in chat knows what it is. Oh, uh, we are- we're so dead. Like, we've gotten- I like how we only got crit super early on the one time we didn't have our buffs. We've had our buffs for the rest of the fight. There's a- there's a few songs, though, that I've got on here that absolutely no one knew of. There was a few. I've, I've got some obscure shit from, like, really old games, like... Uh, so sometimes those get people. Oh, and every once in a while, even one of those super obscure ones, somebody knows. I think somebody knew the Met Commander music, which that was surprising to me. We're upgrading a little bit. He might want default. Actually, he might want Atlas because of the debuffs. Like, those defense downs will really get to you. I mean, I, I didn't say that song was obscure. Like, at no point did I say that song was obscure. I was saying, like, no matter what the song is, normally somebody knows what it is. Somebody thought I was a queen. Oh, that's actually something that runs in my family where we look way younger than we are. It's actually kind of messed up. Karna has my favorite animations in the game, I think. They're done really well. And look, we actually killed one of these. How about that? I almost want to MP this guy, but uh, that's not worth We just bruiser him down the old fashioned way. Uh, 10% crit? Okay. I think actually Atlas is probably gonna be wrong because we're gonna kill the second wave. Man, we almost killed that guy. That'd been amazing if we killed him. Holy crap. That sucks. Anyway, uh, we're probably gonna kill the second wave, guys, uh, immediately. Although getting rid of NP down is nice. If yeah, we had a thousand more damage there. Dream is... I don't know how much damage it's gonna do. If I use my second skill, they're probably all dead. Like, if I kill them both, but I did Buster and be Buster, but I kinda wanna do, like, MP Quick Quick. Even if that gets me attacked once, that's probably worth it. Wow, that was almost so good, but it wasn't. That was almost so good, but it wasn't. That feels bad. Don't crit me, bro. Jesus, triple attack, though. The one good thing about that, though, that might even be worth it, is it lets me set up for the next wave really well. So I get to make crit stars and NP gain. It's unfortunate that I took that much damage, but that was ultimately probably worth it. Yeah, the Sphinxes are divine. Thanks, Ozzy.
You know, I I'm just gonna do this for the crit buff. I think they're dead. Atlas was so wrong though, I could have done Anniversary Blonde. Like, even if I had the anti-down debuff, that would have been worth it. Like it doesn't really do anything. Atlas just didn't like, do anything. I should have put it in slow-mo. Damn it! Oh yeah, they're dead. Don't even need to crit. So he just shot her in the eyes with his eye beam. That's kind of messed up. Just casually throw in two NPs at them. Yeah, I like how you can go into one NP into his other NP. That's kind of awesome. I'm actually really glad they made that his buster and not his extra attack. I think it really worked. Especially because his busters can get like the big crits with the buster up and everything. That's kind of his thing. And the buster down. So you can actually have that second NP hit hard enough to really feel like an NP. And then the lasers for the... For the other other NP uh, works too, so... I like how those are supposed to... Okay, hold on, let's see. Oh yeah, how about all this nonsense? I'm hoping this unlocks wanted quests. Because, uh, yeah, I think it did. Okay, so we're gonna want... We're gonna want to save a boss fairly soon, because... We have so many stages we'll get to keep forever. Like, we get to keep all of these... Right, we get to keep King Potato Chips down there. Um, but yeah, I don't think we get to keep Kiara. If we go with Kiara, we lose all of these wanted quests. And that's just not worth it. Like, it's not worth it to keep one boss fight around and lose all of the... I mean, there, this this is so good for me. If I, when I go to make, like, Epic NPs 3, look at all these bosses I can use for, like, you know, using their NP animation or targeting them with mine and stuff. That's gonna make making it so much easier. And, uh, also just for testing, buff stacking, all that stuff, these stages are amazing, and there's just so many. There's one for, like, every class, because I think we have one for every class now. Let's, let's find out. Alright. Already got double of some classes. Haven't seen an archer yet, but I know there's one. There's an answer, there's a saber. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we have everything. There's Vlad the Berserker. Yeah, I think we have it like almost two of every class actually. Another archer, another assassin. It's the only berserker though. The lancer. Yeah, that gives us really good options there. I, mean, I don't think we're ever going to get to fight Kiara. But the full power of Kiara is not even hard. Like. She just requires you to have like, you know, really stupid stuff, but it's like, it's really easy, and it's like, really boring. Like, you can just do like, Fluffy Boy, and like, Merlin and stuff, and it's like, it's really easy. Like, seriously, I really think she's harder if you do the non-big version, but then you don't remove any of the, the, the buffs, like that, it's much harder. I, and besides, even if you get to keep the wanted quests, I'd rather... I'd probably rather keep a different boss that is more, um... How do I put it? Like, I'd rather keep another boss that lets us test more things. You know, Kiara's not something that you can really test that much on. You can test a lot on her regular form, right? Like that one, you can, you know, it's very, very hard to solo. But you, it is soloable by, like, really good units and stuff. So you could, like, benchmark on that fight. But to get that fight, you'd have to kill all the wanted quests. That's just, it's not worth it. Like, it's, it, there's no way. Maybe on the old account. Maybe on the old account we do that. Because I don't, I don't need the wanted quests on both accounts. The problem is, on the old account, I'm tempted to kill Kiara, so then you unlock, like, the BB stuff, right? You get the Emiya fight, the Shiki fight, and those ones. I'd kind of rather have those, because that's a better play, playing ground. 
Um, it does suck. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to get all of the things, but you, you have to pick and choose, so... I mean, th that's not a solo though. Like, if you just want to stall, then it's really, regular Kiara is really easy. Like, they eat out of the. So there's basically three Kiara fights. You have Big Boy Kiara, right, which is kind of its own thing, which is easy, but it has very high requirements for what you need to use to be able to beat it. And it's very easy to beat though if you have those things. Uh, and it's generally very stall heavy. Very stall heavy. Then you've got uh, Kiara, mini small Kiara, but with all of her buffs, and I think that is absolutely the hardest one. Uh, that one, also to beat it, you need very specific things, but it's definitely beatable, and it doesn't, it doesn't have to be super stall, but it, it's going to be definitely stall oriented, because she's so tanky, uh, she has all of her buffs. And then you have Kiara without her buffs, mini Kiara without her buffs, and then that one is just kind of like a regular boss fight. Like, you still gotta be careful, she can still kill you with her NP, she still has a lot of health. Uh, and there's still a few like gimmicks between Breaker Health Bar and stuff, um, but that one is like doable by, by like a reasonable team, right? You don't need like, you know, you're not gonna need really high end stuff to beat it. That one is very beatable with like a budget team. But it, it's gonna be hard though, honestly. Mini Kiara without her buffs is still gonna be harder than a budget team. But it's also soloable, soloable by like Gramps and Koo and then Kidu and uh, a few other things. And then also you can have Kiara with like half of her buffs, like you could customize, you could give her half of her buffs, you know, that kind of stuff. From what I hear, you get the Emiya stage after Kiara. I haven't confirmed that though. That's why I don't want to be Kiara uh, and stuff because I don't know for sure. But I've heard people say if you beat Kiara, you get the Shiki fight and the Emiya fight and stuff. I think that it's a Tam fight and there was a couple other ones. Like most of the quote unquote super hard fights just boil down to them being boring. Right, because you can't do a lot of the other stuff, so it's not hard, they're just boring. That happens so often when they try to make like a really crazy fight, and you just end up stalling it, and it's just like, snooze fest. And then the only way to do it quickly is if you're a whale, and you do like MLB Black Grail, all the best supports, you know, like, you know, Double Scatty, Waver, Chin Gong, you know, Nero Bride or some bullshit like that. Like, you know, that's like the only, and that, that's just not, it's not skill, that's like wallet, right? So it's just kind of lame. There's a time gate for tomorrow. Yeah, I'll wait until people that have done it so they can tell me, and then I'll decide what I want to keep. So I'm not gonna go. Full, I'm not gonna like pass up on all the boss fights. I'm gonna wait. Like I might even stop. I think this is goes, and I might stop here just to see, you know, what comes and what I want to keep. I don't even remember the melt fight and the uh, nameless fight well enough to know if I want to keep those or not. I'll be look them up again and see. Yeah, the Dark Knights were so stupid. That's like that's like what I'm talking about. To beat them really quickly, you have to have like the stupidest. It's not skill, like it's not, it's just lol, you know, ridiculous options. Um, and then doing it in like quote unquote budget way is still pretty bullshit. And uh, yeah, that, that, that fight is such a poorly designed one. It sucks too, because there were some good ideas in it, but it's just so overtuned. The thing is you can get a lot, like here's the thing, I'm pretty much free to play except for Edmund. Edmund is the one thing I, uh, I did go free to play on. Uh, and I, you know, I have insane options. I have Scatty, I have Merlin, I have Poster Girl, I have MLB K Scope, I've got uh, Black Grail, I've, you know, I've got all kinds of stuff. I only have one MLB K Scope, but uh, still. But I, I, I've also been really decently lucky when it comes to like Merlin and stuff. I literally threw one summon ticket at him and I got him. I, I didn't even want to get him, but anyway. Uh, and I've been playing for a long time, so a lot of people aren't gonna. You can absolutely get a meta as fuck team and be free to play. It's actually, it's if you're, if you're, if you're smart with your SQ and you play for a long time, you're actually pretty likely to be able to get a disgusting team as a free-to-play. Like, people have this idea that free-to-plays can't get good units, right? And they can't get good CEs. That's bullshit. Of course you can, right? Most of the best CEs aren't limited. They're unlimited. So every single time you roll, you have a shot chance of getting them. You play for four years, of course you're gonna have a bunch of fucking OP CEs. Uh, and then if you're smart with your SQ and you don't just roll every time you see a pair of tits, uh, it's pretty easy to actually save up and then like, you know, target some really powerful units and that kind of thing. But some people don't want to do that. Some people want to be free to play. They want to save up, but then they want to roll on their favorite characters. They don't want to roll on Scatty Merlin and Waver and, 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 and stuff like that, right? 
Uh, so it's like, th that's a big part of why I try to you know, keep things more budgeted, because you don't know what people are working with, you don't know how long they've been playing, they, you don't know what they've used their SQ on. However, there's definitely a flip side where like, people act like it's just impossible to have strong things as a free-to-play. It's easy to have strong things as a free-to-play. It's very easy to have strong things as a free-to-play. You just need a little bit of patience and some brains. Yeah, you have to free five star, free four stars, like all kinds of stuff. Yeah, some people, their favorite characters happen to be super strong too, that happens. Like, my account is pretty damn strong. Like, again, the one time I, 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 I busted out the monies was Edmund. But if you just cut Edmund from my account, I, my account is still com is super strong. I got, let's look at this. Let's let's look at this. Like, you know, I got Waver, I've got Merlin. Now Merlin was luck. Uh Scatty wasn't though, because they gave out so much fucking SQ when she was released. Uh, you know, and even if I don't have Merlin, I've got Nightingale, it's an okay stand in, you know, everyone's got Nash, she's super strong. We have Gilgamesh, Romulus, you know, Tesla, it's super strong, Canis is really good, you know, I got really strong three stars to so grail them. Fucking MP5 Mordred, obviously that took forever, but I eventually got her to MP5. Um you know, like my option, and if I don't have Edmund, I've got, uh, I've got Lancelot, and I don't, I don't know what MP rank he is, let me see. He might be MP5, just because he's been in the game for so long. MP4, almost. I mean, like, seriously, these are, these are really good options. Like, I, I've got really good options here. And I've got, like, almost every fucking three-star leveled, uh, and with pretty good skill ranks and everything. And I could have Merlin maxed out, I just don't, because fucking Merlin. Um, and then CE-wise, I'm in really good shape, too. You know, I, I got MLB Black Grail, I got MLB uh, the Origin Bullet, although I will say this doesn't matter very much because it gave, it, it, gave, it gains 5% damage. Like whoop de doo Like it gains 5% damage, that's not, that's not that big of a deal. Uh, you know, I got the Anti-Berserker one, I got fucking K-Scope MLB. Uh, I still don't have this MLB though, this is the, this is the first 5 star CE I ever got. And I've always wanted to MLB it just because every once in a while on coup it's good, normally it's not. But so I've always wanted to get it, and I got it was my first five star CE I ever got. So it was like it was like day one. I got this like day one or something. I got it like immediately, uh, and then very quickly I got it to uh, almost MLB. Like very quickly into my account's life. Like I, I want to say like within a year, probably less, probably within six months, I got it one one copy away from MLB. And here we are, like three and a half years later or some crap, and I I, I just haven't gotten a copy of it. So it feels bad, man. But I'll get it eventually. I'll get it eventually. And I, I've MLB a lot of the other uh, five star CEs. Because seriously, the, the li okay, limited time, limited time five star CEs, a lot of free to plays are never going to get, and they're definitely not going to limit break them. They'll get a few of them. Like that, that for real, that, that's, a, that's something that, that free to plays won't have. There are certain things that are out of the reach of free to play people. You know, you can get some limited time Gasha CEs. But you can only get some. Like, you're not going to get them all back to back. Let's say you save up 800 SQ, and then you roll on an, an event that has a, a, you know, a servant you like, and it has a limited CE. Like a limited time CE. Like Okita. Let's say you saved up for Okita, right? So you get your Okita. You're probably going to get, you know, Poster Girl, right? Which is a limited time one. Right? Where the hell is my Poster Girl? I know it's in your yeah, You're probably going to get Poster Girl. Uh, but then the, literally the next event that comes out, boom, another event comes out. And it's got a limited CE. That's good. Well, you just used all your SQ for Okita and Poster Girl. You got no, you got no SQ left. You're not getting that CE. Maybe you get lucky with some summon tickets and you get a copy of it. Maybe, but you're definitely not going to MLB it. Like no way. So that's the real difference. The, the, the main difference between whales and free to plays is whales have all the limited CEs and they're limit broken and they're NP ranks. Because okay, for example, I have one NP five five star and it's Mordred. That's it. That's the only one. And that took. I got, uh, I got lucky, and it took a long time. Like, it took, a, it, it took several years for this to happen, right? Uh, and that's the only one. I, I have no other 5-star at a, a particularly high MP rank. I've got, I think, Enkidu and Arthur are the only other ones that are over even MP2. They're both MP3. But that's just luck. I have just been spooked by Enkidu a million, or oh, three times, actually. Uh, I, I've just been spooked by Enkidu, and it just happened to happen. That's just luck. And then Arthur I did save up for a, a lot, and then I got him in MP3, and that was that. But uh, all my other five stars are MP1 or MP2. Like, Tesla's MP1, uh, Guild's MP1, Romulus is MP2, uh, uh, although Plot Monk actually is MP2, but that was, that was just luck. And that was actually the Edmund banner. So if it wasn't for Edmund, she'd still be MP1. 
Uh, you know, Gramps is in P1, Nightingale is in P1, uh, Summer Artoria is in P1, uh, or, uh, uh, what's it, Artoria, Joan of Arc's in P1, right? Like, overwhelmingly, my five stars are in P1, and then a nice chunk are in P2, and that's it, right? So that's a big difference, where, like, you know, a, a whale's gonna have all those five stars, they're gonna have more five stars than me, and they're, like, all gonna be really high in P ranks. You know, like, if, if, like I don't have Orion, but let's say I had gotten Orion, if I got lucky, he'd only be in P1, right, instead of in P5, and that, that makes a big difference. Especially when you combine it with this other thing being in P5, and this other thing being in P5. So I'm not saying there's not a difference between whales and free to place, there is, but I do get tired of any time someone has any semblance of rare stuff, like, oh my god, that couldn't possibly be free to play, right? There's a big difference between somebody having, you know, a few five stars really pimped out, and then an army of them, right? Like, it's not the same thing. And like I said, CEs is the big one. CEs is the big one. And people hear that, and they think I'm talking about, like, K-Scope and Limit Over Zero and stuff, which I'm not. You know, those are those really aren't hard to, to limit break. You're guaran you play this game for a few years, you're guaranteed to have some five-star CEs limit broken. Now, which ones are going to be random as fuck? You know, Chris, for example, I've got Origin Bullet, K-Scope, and I think, like, Limit Over Zero, Limit Broken, and, and whatever the fuck this thing's called, a Victor from the Moon or something, right? But then there's a whole bunch of random five-stars I don't have Limit Broken. Oh, I got Heaven Seal Limit Broken. I didn't actually realize that. Uh, but there's all, you know, there's all kinds of random five-star ones that I don't have Limit Broken yet. Although, honestly, looking at it, I have most of the default CEs Limit Broken now. At least the ones that are worth the shit. Uh, again, been playing for a really long time. It's actually funny, it's mostly the ones that I super want that I don't have Limit Broken. Like, I really wanted this Limit Broken, I don't have it, and Formal Craft. Between Limit Over Zero, Imaginary Around, and Formal Craft... Oh no, I do have Formal Craft Limit Broken. Never mind, I'm full of shit. Okay, I didn't think realize I have that one. So it's just Imaginary Element. Oh, I'm sorry, Imaginary Around that I don't have Limit Broken. Uh, and I got Demonic Limit Broken, and that's really good, actually. So yeah, now that I look at it, now that I'm, I actually have almost every single 5 star CE Limit Broken now, that's in the default set. Not 2030, though. That one's not Limit Broken. Uh, and that's a really good one. Uh, so yeah, 2030... Imaginary Round, uh, the Berserker one, but it's new. You wouldn't, ex uh, you know, a free-to-play, you wouldn't expect to have that one broken yet. No way. Uh, unless you got really lucky. Other than that, I pretty much have most of them. Oh, and the Sunlight one. The, the, I don't, where is that? The, the three-hit evade one. I don't have that MLB either, but again, that's new. So. And so, yeah, between that and then all the, the event CEs, you know, I mean, the event CEs, everybody's gonna limit break. You know, you, you're gonna have a hell of a selection of CEs. Like, being free to play, there's just gonna be a degree of randomness though to what OP thing you have. Unless you unless you play for a really long time, then that kinda of gives you more chances, but... Like, if you've, been, if you've been playing the game for like one year, yeah, you might have a 5-star CE limit broken. But who knows which one it is. Like, you know, it could be one that's not all that useful. Or it could be 2030 or K-Scope, right? So that, that, that makes a big difference. I mean, technically I'm not entirely free to play though, because, you know, Edmund... And I do GSSR sometimes. I don't. I don't always do them, but I always say almost everybody does GSSR. It's just the one time you don't like. One reason why I don't spend money on this game is because it's just not good value for money. It's just not, and I don't like gambling. I don't like spending money on a maybe. I like spending money on a know what I'm going to get. Where at GSSR, you know you're going to get a five star, right? You don't know which one, but you know you're going to get a five star. So that's that's decent. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm, I just. Really don't like spending money on gacha games. I like playing gacha games, and I, I enjoy unlocking things. It's fun to. That's actually a fun aspect of them, is because people have different options. That's the thing. That's actually why I find it more fun to be free to play, because I've got the things I focused on. You know, I've saved SQ for Arthur and Mordred and stuff, and for like Romulus and Canis, right? I saved up for those, so I have those. But there's all kinds of things I don't have. I mean, dear God, I have a lot of nice stuff here. But do you realize how many of uh, five stars I don't have? Like, oh my God! Like, there's so much stuff missing. Uh, but someone, but Cairo has some of those things, right? Because he saved up for different things than I did, right? So it's kind of fun to see like the different things you happen to get and the different things you really saved up to get. Because yeah, you can save up for something. Uh, you know, hell, I saved up like two thousand, almost three thousand SQ for Canis and Romulus. Uh, but I, I got all kinds of other random stuff along the way, right? Um, so that, it's that's fun. That's a fun aspect of gosh games. You kind of get you get your little pool of things to work with that are different from other people, right? I actually really enjoy that, and I enjoy you know saving up. Uh, and then, you know, picking where I use my SQ and things like that. Uh, but I, you know, being a whale, I would not enjoy because I, I, the, the value for your money is just not good and I would feel bad. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not rich or anything, so I don't want to be, like, blowing that kind of money. Um, 
and then you have everything. I wouldn't want to have everything in these games, right? What makes it like like fun to have your own like team is because it's more unique to you. Now, that's just me. You know, I can understand why some people like having everything and getting to test everything and getting to do any team comp option. Because there's more to the game than just like, you know, your own units and stuff. You got like the you know, the different ways you can fight bosses and the different setups. I get that. I get that. Like, so I, it's not like there's anything wrong with whaling, but it is absolutely not for me. Like, it's, just, it's not for me. Like, I, I, I like uh, not having everything. And some whales don't roll in everything. That's another thing. There's a huge difference between, like, a fish, a dolphin, a whale, an omega whale, and then a leviathan. Right? There's a, there's a lot of differences here. You know, some people are like, yeah, I, I, I'll, you know, I'll blow money, like, two or three times a year on like those things that I really want, right? And that's pretty reasonable in my opinion. Um, you know, still not not for me, but uh, you know, I, 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 that makes sense. And you have someone that maybe does that once a year. They'll, they'll blow money once a year on the one thing they really care about, right? And then you got the people that roll often, but they skip a lot too, right? They're like, yeah, maybe every other raid up or every third raid up, I'll, I'll bust out the wallet, but I definitely skip over plenty of raid ups too. And then you got the people that roll basically on every raid up, but maybe they're not MP5ing, Right, and then you got people that roll on every single fucking raid up and MP5 every fucking single thing, and you know, and that that's a Leviathan. That's a and there's very few of those, but uh, there are some. All right, let's see here. I, I, Toho is not like, from what I understand, from what I talk to him, he's not quite a Leviathan. He, he's a he's a big boy whale, but he does skip things here and there, and he doesn't MP5 everything. He does MP5 a lot though. He's up there, like he's definitely up there. Uh, maybe maybe he, he maybe he's like a baby Leviathan. He, he, like I said, he's he's definitely up there. What do we want to use? It's always rough when it's a single target situation. I, I have a feeling this is a single target situation. I, I'll try it anyway. And before regret. I don't want to get into all the other drama. Like, there's been so much drama in the FGO community. I don't, I don't even want to get into that right now. And in the early days, a lot of it was aimed at me. I remember so many people like tried to drag me into the mud in the early days. That doesn't happen anymore, thankfully. I'm really glad for that. I, remember, and the, I mean, there's a few. Well, actually, there's a few people that still do, but they're easy to ignore. But uh, yeah, I remember in the early days, there's so much bullshit. But uh, thankfully, most of it's not aimed at me anymore. So I try to stay the hell out of it, but. You can't always. I, I play in A occasionally, but I mostly just play JP. I play it on the side every once in a while for funsies. But I don't really put any effort into it, and I don't really like, care about it. I'm glad it exists, I'm really glad it exists, but I, I don't personally care about it. I think we're gonna lose horribly. Okay. Let's see. No need to remove the art down yet. We'll see if she does like her attack down or something. Grand Leviathans. Yeah, I use NA to basically just, you know, check out this. Like, I normally. So here's okay, I've talked about this before, but I'll go into it oh, one more time here. So it's like, there's a lot of reasons I don't really care about NA. One, I've been playing JP since before NA existed. Uh, and I really care about, like, the gameplay and that kind of stuff. And the thing is, for, like,. I can read the bios of characters and stuff online. I don't need to read them in-game. So it doesn't matter that I can't read moon runes. 
the UI and stuff is super easy to navigate anyway. Like, I don't even read the text on NA because, like, I, I just got everything memorized. So, like, I, I, don't, I don't... That's irrelevant. And when a new story comes out, they're generally translated pretty well pretty quickly, so I can just read those if I care. Um, so there's just no need for it, right? And, I, and like, I, I always want to see the latest and greatest. So I, I want to, you know, when there's a new character, I want to be able to play with the new character. When there's a new boss, I want to be able to fight the new boss. I don't want to have to wait two years all the time. Uh, and I was already so invested in this account by the time NA came out, and then NA is two years behind, and I just don't, I don't need the translations for anything. Uh, however, it has been nice to have, like, an official translations for the stories and stuff, so, you know, I, I use NA for that. I, I just, you know, read through the stories myself over there. And, you know, it's fun every once in a while to dip in and fl play an old boss fight that I, I can't play on JP anymore and stuff. Uh, so, so I, 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 when I do play NA, I generally enjoy it. Right? And like I can roll on different things. Like I decided like fuck it. I, every time Scath is rated up, I'm just gonna roll on Scath now. Cause I just happened to get her early on in my that account's life through luck. So I was like fuck it, I guess we'll just roll on her when she gets rated up. Uh, so someday and they will have an NP5 Scath one of these days. It might take a while, but we'll, we'll someday we'll probably get that. Uh, so it just it gives me a chance to like play different units and do different things every once in a while. So it's not like I don't enjoy NA, but it's like I don't care. I'm not like, oh my god, I have to keep up with NA. Like, oh my god, I gotta make, you know, I, I gotta play the new stuff. I gotta make videos. I gotta, I, I gotta farm. Like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't give a fuck. Clairvoyance is nice on NA. That's, uh, that's definitely nice. Okay, I think now it's time to dish the art down. Like, I'm just doing no damage. Like, like, we're doing no damage right now. See, and honestly, that if... So, okay, here's another thing. I totally get the clairvoyance thing. That really is awesome, especially as a free-to-play. That's, like, that's super, uh, that's super hype, right? Like, it's really nice how much you can, like, plan out and target things and, and, and that kind of stuff. That's very, very helpful. But by the time NA started, I already had I already had Mordred, I already had Enkidu, I already had Arthur, uh, I ar already had you know my coup level 100. You know those those are all the characters I super care about. I don't really need clairvoyance because all the stuff I really wanted I already had. Uh, and like yeah, I can get ganked. Like sure, you know I just saved up really hard for Lost Belt Five. You know I got Canis and Romulus right, but I, I, that ate into my stockpile like a good bit. So let's say let's say let's say Anniversary Five has Zeus in it. You know, we don't know, but let's say Anniversary 5 has Zeus in it. I probably roll, right? But then boom, Sir K comes out. I'm like, no, okay, okay, maybe maybe I still have some left and I get him, but then I'm out. And then boom, Green Knight comes out. And then I'm fucked. And then boom, Henry V comes out, right? Like, that's a problem, right? Where if like, if I knew all that stuff was coming in a short period of time, I could pick, okay, go for this one and that one, right? You know, and kind of space it out. And then if you have anything left over, then go for that one, right? Like, uh, but I can't do that on JP because I don't know what's happening. Thankfully, most stuff that comes out I don't care about. It's pretty rare that I get ganked, right? Normally it's actually the opposite. I actually have too much time to save up. Like, I, for real. Normally I have too much time to save up. I had like, I had like what, 2,500 SQ or something crazy like that by the time I finally rolled on for Romulus and Canis. And I obviously I didn't use all 2,500 so I wasn't trying to get MP5 Romulus system for MP2. So it's like... You know, I saved up more than was necessary, really. Although that's kind of good, because Lost Belt 6 I actually really care about. But it's rare that things back-to-back, -back, you know, I care about that much. So for me personally, clairvoyance isn't that necessary, because I already have so much stuff that I like, and the stuff I actually care about only comes out every once in a while, so I'm good. But if I've been starting out day one, and, you know, yeah, I'd, I'd like clairvoyance. Like I say, I have no FGO accounts right now. I'll start playing FGO right now. Yeah, having clairvoyance would be pretty nice. Yeah, this has been a slow year because of the coronavirus. It started off pretty good, but yeah, it's been like filler weeks and dead weeks and reruns and uh, and that kind of stuff. But I mean, that's normally I would complain about that, but with, because of the virus and everything, it's complete. For once, it's un completely understandable. So. But the thing is, it hasn't been lax on raid ups. We still have pretty much the same amount of raid ups as ever. Yeah, most of them are old units, but they're old units I don't have. But I still don't want them for the most part, right? Like, just most of the five stars in this game, I don't want. If you took, if you took every single five star in the game and divided them into want, neutral, don't want, right? The the want column would not be that big, right? It'd be, you know, it'd be decently sized, but it wouldn't be that big. That's not even a raid up. Like the AOE thing's not even a raid up, right? They just put a bunch of stupid shit in a in a, a bowl and then rate any of it up and be like, yeah, this is this makes sense, right?
They should have like individually rated up a, a, some of those characters throughout the period. That would have been a better way. I think what they wanted to do there is they wanted like Omega Whales that were new to the game that like had been you know, they missed like Summer Nero, right? Like they're an Omega Whale and they're rolling on every you know every you know five star that comes out that, that they want uh, and four star and whatnot. Uh, but they just happen not to be playing back when uh, Saber Nero was available and she's so popular. There, I'm sure there are Omega Whales that really want her, right? And so even though she's not rated up, she's just there. Uh, you're gonna have some dumb schmuck, you know, throw like $2,000 at the screen uh, to get her and then DW's, cause you know, they actually made decent money that this month. So it worked apparently. I got there's just been no turn that it made sense to use uh, my Star Absorb thing because all it does in a solo is shuffle and I haven't had any need to shuffle, so. A blue note with the gifted sub again. I appreciate it, man. Four gifted subs. Thanks, man. Let's see what we're gonna do here. I should get my NP from her attacking me, although I don't actually have my NP gain buff anymore, so maybe I won't. I mean, her hit count is fairly high. If I had my NP gain buff, I would definitely do quick, quick. But because I don't, I'm kind of leaning towards art, art, just to be safe. I mean, we'll play. We'll be risky. We're just gonna hope that uh, she decides to uh, use like her quick attack on us. Now, I should have done art art. If you don't have the NP gain up, it's, it's not worth it. The only way this is gonna work out if she like, oh, never mind. This is a joke battle. Feels bad. I say the only way we're gonna get NP there is if she like triple attacks. Thanks, Fco. Why do you always gotta be like this? Can we won. Yeah, I know she got the shield, but I thought there was one where she had the shield where you still had to go a good distance, but uh, apparently not. I mean, how, how could I not notice the shield? I, I had done like, you know, 10% of the health bar, 20% of that. It was like nothing. Right, let's try this again. Yeah, I know in the early days it was really easy to get K-Scope. And on NA, I did get a copy of it, but I, you know, I wasn't wailing or anything. And I was actually saving up most of my SQ, so I only got one copy. But that was good enough for me, so. Why does it have to be this background again? My, I, my, I finally was losing the nauseous feeling, and then now it's like, uh, we're back. Why did he have to be like this? Well, we're probably not going to keep this stage, then. I feel like it's going to be Melt or Nameless. I'm sorry, Demia. That was a pretty pointless charm. I know, I'm sure they've been working on the anniversary this whole time. It's just, I think work has been super slow because, also George, could you die, please, buddy? It's just, you know, the virus and then the DW's, the thing, even if there wasn't for the virus, DW's generally not a very quick company, right? They're pretty lazy. There's a lot of evidence for that. So then you add in the coronavirus, they're gonna be crazy slow. The melt fight has the same background too. Are you fucking kidding me? What a mess. Do I NP here? I, it's such a bad time to NP, but we have so many, like I don't have my quick up, I'm not gonna have my, my NP up, but it takes so long to get rid of George because of the health thing. I think the Amia fight's got like the, the uh, more normal background, if I remember correctly. I don't, I don't think it does. And the reason I know that is because to this day, one of the oldest videos ever made was the Demia fight. That was like when I was just starting out. And for whatever reason, that video... It's not even a particularly great video, right? But it, for some reason, it gets a lot of views, even way after the fact. So I'm always getting YouTube comments on it and stuff, so I see the thumbnail, and so I see the background, and I know it's not this, so... 
I have no idea why that's a video that has just randomly gets comments to this day, but it, it is, so. I actually get some use out of my Star Absorb here. Okay, we're about to get AoE'd in the face. This is a terrible time to do my evade. But I guess we have to. That kind of sucks. I mean, it's not terrible. It's just not, not the ideal time for it. This is probably my least favorite stage in the game, simply because it gives me uh, a headache. I'm not really careful. I mean, I, I, I seriously think in their mind, Saber Wars 2 was basically the Halloween event. That's, I think, is how they see it. And so I think this year it'll be Saber Wars 3 around Halloween. And then next year they'll probably do something different that's not Saber Wars related. I'm at 98% NP, by the way. I'm a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little irked right now. Because now this really messes up my Atlas Mystic Code. Like, the timing is, is, is fucked now. I guess we hope we, we break the health bar the old-fashioned way here, but I honestly would've been happy to do, to NP, break the bar, and then do uh, then do quick quick and do into overkill. That actually would've been fine, but uh, nope, we're not even gonna break. Okay, we're fucked now. We, we've lost so much value because of this. Look at our draining stars. Like, we basically have gone around the wheel. We could have MP'd and gotten our MP back by now, right? And now we're wasting... Like, it's so important to MP, make a bunch of stars, then crit with your third skill up. Because then you get the crit MP multiplier, and you get the MP gain skill. And that lets you get another MP really quickly. But now our, our, our thing is gone, because, you know... Life is cruel. Because, like, it's so nice to have your NP gain skill up on your NP. Because her NP has a very high hit count, and so you're applying the NP gain skill up to each hit count, and that that's, uh... It's pretty good, but now we're doing it with no... Because you get the quick up, too. You get the quick up and the NP gain up, so you can actually get a lot of refund. Even though her default NP gain's not good. But, uh, that ain't gonna happen here. But if I didn't do what I did, we would be dead. Also, we would've NP'd at HP bar with, like, three... Hey, help, so. It's just unfortunate. Yeah, I'd actually like a Halloween event that's like an actual Halloween. A Hall Halloween? A Halloween event. A Halloween event, so we, um. You know, get costumes. Imagine adding costumes on Halloween, chat. Imagine that. I don't think, they, I don't think they've ever added a costume for Halloween. I mean, they're obviously going to do a sequel, though, because the ending of Saber Wars 2 had, like, that, like, epilogue after credits moment, right, with Billy and that unknown gunslinger person. That was obviously them hinting at, at, at Saber Wars 3. Or, or, I don't know why I'm yelling, but, or they're, they're just hinting at them using that, those characters in something else. And I guess, you know, they could use, uh, use that gunslinger person in some other thing. That's not Saber Wars, right? They, they could build that, but I suspect they're gonna do it in Saber Wars 3. This is so awkward. Like, every, the timing on everything is so off. I think we have to evade, because I think if she gets to her NP again, we're going to lose anyway. Yeah, I don't really like the Servant Universe. There's some characters that are in it that I don't mind, but that's because they're characters that kind of exist outside of it and stuff. I, I don't, I don't really like the, how over the top silly bullshit it is. So if they, you know, if they want to keep doing like gunslinger stuff, that's fine with me. But if you could make make it like not space gunslinger stuff, that would be swell. I like how she's got a, a quick charge gimmick here, and she, she's done it twice. She's double a sure hit, by the way. So gameplay-wise, I wouldn't hate keeping this stage, but background-wise, I, uh, I've seen better. 
Yeah, I wish Calamity Jane. I wish they'd at least give her a costume that made her more serious. At least they said there is a more serious Calamity Jane out there, but uh, they're, 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 they're never gonna make it. In before quick charge into MP. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. That does make this a pretty freaking interesting stage. That makes me really want to keep this stage. It's just... The background, though. Well, we're super dead. I wonder if we can take her out with us. I, I doubt it. Almost. Well... About to get some swords in the face. BM a little bit. Okay, uh, we might keep that stage. We might keep that stage. I feel like that's a you know you got, uh, she's AOE, so she's not like an amazing saver for that. Although it's a good DM, but that that would that would push a lot of I'm sorry archers, but that that would push a lot of archers uh, pretty hard. So that's not a bad stage to keep around. We'll see. I'll look at what else is coming up and see if there's like a better boss I could keep that would give me even more wanted quests to keep. That would be even better. But uh, we'll see. It is nice having all these wanted quests though. I think I'm going to wrap up there. Because actually I want to start working on that St. George video. Because uh, that's going to take a lot of work. And I also need to eat. And uh, I I my head kind of hurts from all that background. So I think that's a good time to stop. Hey, we didn't really do too much today, but I mean, what are you gonna do? It's, it's filler time, and it's even more filler time coming up, so. Uh, let's see, when does the Amaze event start? I think it's pretty soon, isn't it? Isn't it like, is it tonight? Or, or is it 20th? I can't remember. I think it might be on the 20th, so we might have to have a little bit. Uh, 22nd, oh, okay, we've got, we got a bit of time then. We got almost a week. So no rush. God, I, I don't, I don't wanna do that event again. It's so boring. And I can't do it on the crap account. I'm sorry, not the crap account. Uh, the new account. It was the new account actually needs to do events. It's only done one event ever. It's done one event ever, right? So I really want to do events on it. And the last, this last six months has been full of, of, of events that you could do on a new account. Uh, but of course I start playing a new account when those events are over. And then now we have an event where a new account can't play it. So that kind of sucks. Alrighty. Um, what am I gonna rate here? What rate this that blue guy? We rated him a, a little while ago. All right, boys. Uh, I might not stream tomorrow if I'm really like working on that that George video. I'm not like in a rush. Like I don't have to like make it this second. But I don't know. We'll see. I, I might I might take my time and, and get that done. Uh, we'll see. All right, boys, you have a good one, and I will catch y'all later. George with the cards today, man.